Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, the upcoming virtual conference that is going to be on recent trends on uh, life sciences. I welcome all the speakers and all the delegates to this upcoming virtual conference. Sorry for the delay. There was some technical glitch. And for, I would like to pray uh, to Dr. Uh, Goddess uh, Saraswati to uh, make this uh, event successful. And our first uh, uh, speaker of the day would be Dr. D.K. Gupta. Dr. D.K. Gupta, uh, can you uh, uh, speak? And Hi, good morning, everybody. Yeah, good morning, Dr. Gupta. And yes, before we get into the virtual conference and uh, first speech, I will have a brief introduction of Dr. D.K. Gupta. Dr. D.K. Gupta uh, is acknowledged as a young entre enterprising doctor has emerged as one of the successful entrepreneurs in the healthcare industry. He is known for providing world-class healthcare facility to the patients in the region of Delhi and CR. In a span of a short time, he has brought his vision into reality. Dr. DK Gupta is a proud owner and promoter of a multi-speciality hospital under the brand name Felix Healthcare Private Limited. He is a renowned pediatri pediatrician with more than 14 years of experience in the medical field. He is known for his empathy and understanding by his patients and thus recommended as one of the best child specialist doctors in Noida, Delhi and NCR. And his today's topic is an unseen monarch rules for Sibley. Dr. DK Gupta, you can go ahead. Thank you so much, ma'am, for my introduction. Thank you so much. I will just share my screen and I will start. I think my screen is visible to all. Yes, we can see Thank your screen. You. My topic is uh, restraint updates on COVID-19. I think we have to reevaluate that if we see that there is a current surge in the number of cases across the India in different states, around more than eight states are having re-surge, re-occurrence of this COVID-19 disease in last two, three weeks. We have studied around 23,000 new cases, more than 23,000 new cases across India. And 85% of these cases were limited to these eight states named Kerala, Karnataka, Punjab, Maharashtra, Mumbai, and Delhi, etc. Therefore, I think we, too, we should learn and we should go back to basics ki how to control this COVID-19. Otherwise, we will fail again and there will be a second wave across the India and there is a threat across the India for a second wave right now. And we have seen that different parts of the world like UK, United Kingdom, they are suffering second or even third wave in their countries. And there are several countries on the globe, they are having long lockdown till now also. Therefore, I will start from back to basics and then I will touch few points on recent updates in COVID-19 on vaccine, on treatment parts and other parts also. Thank you so much for giving me opportunity on this platform. My name is Dr. DK Gupta and I will start from COVID-19. COVID-19 means, co means Corona, VI means virus, D stands for disease, and 19 because it, disease was diagnosed in December 19 at Wuhan, China. So this is COVID-19. I will cover what is COVID-19, COVID-19 in India, what are the symptoms and signs of COVID-19 disease, how it spreads, it's very important, and prevention, that is the most important part of this disease and safe practices and what are the important timeline in India regarding this disease spread and development of vaccine, development of treatment and vaccine launch, etc. And what is the testing options for COVID-19 available in India and what is about largest vaccination program in India. Thank you so much. Now, what is COVID-19? We all know this is a corona, novel coronavirus known by SARS-CoV-2 and it was first identified in Wuhan city of China on 31st December 2019. There is a, also several story, stories regarding this uh, identification. Most of people across the world they know and they believe that disease by earlier started, started spreading across China but they somehow they concealed it and after two three months of disease spread when there were so many deaths then China and WHO declared on 31st December 2019 
and that is a new identification of new virus SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. It is, has been similar viruses has been identified previously in this world and they have uh, mimicked or they have given the uh, diseases they mimic acute respiratory syndrome like disease and regarding the origin the origin there is a theory there are several theories but it has been uh, not proven but it has been uh, uh, summarized that the primary host is bat and from bat in a uh, market of Wuhan bat market of Wuhan from bat it virus is spread accidentally to human beings and from human beings the chain of transmission starts from human to human and it has uh, is spreaded from China to all over globe more than 200 countries across the globe and finally WHO has to declare a global pandemic current situation recent updates on COVID-19 in India if we see currently there are more than 1 crore 12 lakh cases more than 1.12 crore cases in India and active cases are around 1.68 percent that is around 1.89 lakhs total recovered and discharged that is a huge number that's a good sign for India and good sign for Indian people that they have we have great immunity and it means 96.9 around 97 percent has recovered from disease and half of not recovered means around 1.6 percent are still recovering or getting treatment in different hospital across the India and out of 50 percent in them has died around 1.4 percent means death toll is around 1.58 lakhs 1 lakh 50 thousand 58 thousand has been died from this pandemic in India only and this is official data that has been captured we don't know about the unofficial data now this is a good sign that there is a high recovery rate means more than i told you more than 97 percent are recovered uh, maybe there may be a significant number of asymptomatic patients symptomatic patients those symptomatic with severe illness severe pneumonia they have been treated and they have been recovered 1.58 percent are currently active patients and 1.4 percent has been died that was a huge pandemic and everybody was suffering on the globe because of this pandemic everybody was trying every government was trying to control this pandemic therefore government of india has involved several pandemic acts to control this pandemic and these were epidemic disease act 1897 disaster management act 2005 Indian Penal Code 1860 National Security Act 1980 Information Technology Act that is 2000 I think we all know this slide but never we follow 80 percent 90 percent we don't follow this slide that's why I have to reiterate reiterate and reinforce on this slide that everybody should follow otherwise we will have second or third wave in India also and the before knowing the precautions prevention we should know how it is spread there are two methods of spread one is direct and one is indirect direct is through droplet transmission indirect is through contact transmission droplet means somebody is he's in close contact with you and he's have suffering from viral illness and he coughs or is needed or even during breathing if he exhales the air the droplets can formites can come outside his body and if somebody is in less than six feet distance then he can directly inhale through his nose or mouth and he can be contaminated or he can be infected this is the most common cause of transmission more than 95 percent transmission occurs through this route only second is indirect transmission that is mainly through the contact surfaces most common surfaces across our uh, offices in homes in lift corridors staircases wherever we are sneezing or coughing and these droplets are coming in contact with the laptop table staircase chairs even desktop whatever object in our nearby area if these formats are on these surfaces they can survive from hours to days depending upon the temperature humidity and type of surface and from these infected surfaces we can whosoever will touch these surfaces he can 
get this infection through his mouth nose and eyes and this is not very common but still it contributes a lot for this covid pandemic we know that there are three new strains one found in brazil uh, one found in britain and the third is in uh, south africa and according to the britain um, regarding to the britain uh, I, uh, this is new strain we know this is strain is little more faster for transmission of this disease we all know the symptoms of covid 19 and they are again important because now contact tracing and testing and it's reduced across india therefore again we should have a high suspicion index for person who is having fever dry cough or tiredness or he be having with these most common symptoms if he is having body ache sore throat headache conjunctivitis diarrhea loss of taste very specific loss of smell very specific or discoloration coloration of finger or toe means cyanosis of fingers and if somebody is having severe symptoms like difficulty in breathing shortness of breath chest pain pressure on the chest and loss of speech or loss of movement these are very serious symptoms if somebody is having these type of symptoms there is a high suspicion rate he or she should immediately be, should be isolated and investigated immediately to rule out covid 19 there so that he can be early diagnosed and early treated the average incubation period is five to six days however it can be maximum up to 14 days therefore if somebody is having in contact of some infected person he can develop symptoms only after five to six days and maximum up to 14 days safe practices we all know but we never follow it we have seen across all indian parts all states all districts nobody is now following this safe practices and i'm again reiterating that we should wear a mask and that mask very important that should cover your nose mouth and it should have a strong air seal also means particularly for healthcare workers they should have a mask that should be n95 or surgical mask with a good seal air seal so that the exhaled air cannot go outside this mask and or inhaled air cannot in get infected from the surrounding area so that air seal is very important for healthcare workers or high risk persons and there are two or three types of masks we all know n95 mask surgical medical mask we should know who and there are also homemade masks also we should know whom to wear how to protect them how to reuse them how to like dispose them these are all guidelines available everywhere i think we should follow all these with um, great precaution physical distancing or social distancing that is very new technology coming after this covid pandemic we should always avoid <clears throat> these crowded places like malls markets if there is not there is not urgency and if have, we have to go in these public places then we should stay around two meter or six feet away from each other so that if somebody is coughing and sneezing you should not get infected wash your hands often i think we should know we should also wash our hands either with soap and water or with 70 percent alcohol sanitizer and we should know also what are the steps of the hand washing there are seven steps of w, according to who we should follow these steps during hand wash and it should be frequent enough whenever we are in coming with any uh, 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 any uh, infected person or any dark suspected person or any area where is unknown person are coming and going we should always hand wash frequently if one hourly two hourly depending upon the uh, suspicion rate of that area clean and disinfect i as i have told you that it can spread to through the contact transmission also means the common surfaces therefore we should always clean and disinfect common surfaces like lift buttons hand railings table chairs whatever it is coming in our uh, area that should be cleaned and disinfect i am uh, disinfected frequently as per guidelines and we should always use one percent sodium hypochlorite 
or 70% alcohol to clean these surfaces. Guidelines are readily available on the uh, WHO and this uh, Minister of Health websites. We should follow these guidelines. Even the housekeeping part is very important. How to do we clean the surface of the floor and the floor surfaces? Like we should follow the three bucket system we should follow the figure of eight policy so there are so many things they are all available on the website we should follow each and uh, each and everything they will not prevent us from only from the covid they will prevent us from other diseases also this is covid india timeline i think we all know that on 26 august serum institute of india in association with the astrazeneca and oxford university they started trial in india for the covid shield vaccine and the COVID vaccine were quite less in October and November and there was a surge during the Chhat Puja, Diwali and the Sera. And after that, on January, India has given the approval for the first two vaccine in India, that is COVID shield and co-vaccine for emergency authorization, emergency use in India after weighing the risk and benefit of this vaccine. On December 14, there was a new variant found in England that was spreading fast and that resulted in one more lockdown in England and on uh, COVID on uh, 16th January COVID vaccine was launched in India for the public use and they started from healthcare workers first and the second group the second launch but from 1st March of and, uh, this month only for the uh, age group of more than 60 years and less than 45 years with the comorbidities. These are, these are the important Indian timelines. Now, how I told you that there are only to control this pandemic is this contact tracing, testing and early treatment. These are three only strategies that can be done. And fourth is giving the vaccine prevent currently we have a vaccine right now. So for screening or uh, contact tracing, we have three tests available right now but first is this is a lab part and first i have already told you that regarding symptoms and sign if somebody he is suspicious he is having these symptoms of upper respiratory infection he should ideally go for this screening test and we have three tests one is antigen test that gives test result within half an hour only very simple to use very simple to interpret it and second is rt pcr test that's a molecular test it took around four to six hours for to get a report but it is right now it's readily available in india across most of the cities we have different many labs right now there is no uh, deficiency of labs in the india and third is antibody test this is mainly for the community studies to see the zero conversion of the asymptomatic patient to see the load but prevalence of the disease in the uh, society so these are three tests available for the diagnosis of the covid 19. testing <clears throat> i think we all know we have done more than 22 crores of sampling and testing across india and last i think one day before yesterday we have done 7.78 like tests across the india this is a new recent update regarding COVID-19 we are talking about. There is a new variant identified in UK. The variant is V.1.1.7 has 23 mutations in their spike proteins. And this mutation give rise, given it more trans, it was highly transmission, transmission disease because of this mutation. It, is in, it has increased the transmission rate of the virus. Therefore, we should know there, is, there are uh, like the genetic drift or genetic shift can change the virus genome and the virus can be more lethal. Therefore, we, all, we should focus on controlling this disease. Otherwise, we will have several new strengths and that will be difficult to control. I will I will like to little elaborate this. The viruses are very fragile and they are known for the changes in their genome. Means they can have mutations in genome the, how they have uh, mutation because whenever they go our inside our body they stick to our uh, cells and in goes inside the cells and inside the cell their rna uh, tra transforms into dna and the dna into protein uh, like rna dna into uh, pro uh, transition into protein and there are replication of this virus and that during copying of this rep uh, uh, different virus cells there can be some 
changes or there can, can be some mistakes in these mistakes results in the mutations or that can be two types of mutation one is genetic shift and the second is genetic drift drifts are the small mutations those currently identified in the covid strains and they, they, they have no major change in genome and will not change the vaccine nature or vaccine quality or, or vaccine use but if there is genetic shift that can happen within one or two year for any virus like it happens with the swine flu also if there is a genetic shift it means there is a major change in the genome of the virus and that will result in the change in treatment also and change in prevention also that means we have to make new maybe we have to make new vaccine for controlling this virus therefore it is very important to control this virus as early as possible there is a second variant identified in south africa also there was a multiple mutations in s protein and we don't know that it causes currently more severe disease, but still such is going on. There is a third variant identified in Brazil and the variant is P1 and it is, has 17 mutations, including three in the S protein. So mostly right now, whatever we have seen, the mutations are mostly confined to spike protein, uh, S protein. It means <clears throat> there are so many vaccines available. Those are having wholesale um, virus or those who are having like they're using nucleic acid or other parts of this virus for making the vaccine they are effective for these variants also recent updates on treatment we all know that treatment is limited and prevention is most important and in prevention we have precautions and vaccine if we talk about the treatment part we know the oxygen is the main history of therapy number one number two whosoever has got this covid 19 he has to isolate himself if he is having not severe symptoms he should stay at home he should have plenty of fluids he should not be dehydrated he should monitor his vitals like heart rate respiratory temperature oxygen saturation daily two three every two to three hourly if there is any alarming symptoms like if you are having difficulty in breathing chest pain heaviness or seizure or confusion or blueness blue discoloration of eye uh, lips and um, limbs then he should immediately contact his nearby hospital facility in hospital facility we have recent Updates on treatment, and it includes diagnosis also. We have to do several tests, like we already told you regarding confirmatory diagnosis. We have to do antigen tests or RT PCR or radiological tests, like CT uh, X ray of chest and CT scan. That is the most important thing right now. CT chest is very good test for early diagnosis and to assess the severity of disease also. There are several blood tests also, like we have to do. Uh, a complete blood count we have to do crp we have to see the patient is not suffering from the covid strong then we have to see the interleukin 6 they have a serum ferritin level uh, like their elijah level their other blood tests those can tell you the severity of disease and if patient is not suffering and they will also guide what medica medication we should use for for that patient so that we can have good recovery for him there are few Drugs approved across the globe like Remdesivir, FDA approved, Dexamethasone that has been studied by the this uh, Oxford University on a larger trial. And in India, we have used a lot of convalescent plasma to give antibodies to the suffering severe patient, those are having severe disease. Even we have used monoclonal antibodies like Toxizumab. There are other new latest trends or latest development in back, uh, this uh, treatment, but also there is a Bamlanabinab. ETC may be up, Cassera may be up, and MD may be up, kinase inhibitors. There are so many drugs. Currently, more than 100 drug trials are going on to discover good treatment for COVID-19. But still, there is no definite, definite treatment for this COVID-19 disease. Therefore, we should focus on precaution and prevention. Precaution, we have already discussed. Prevention is vaccine. Now, we know there are around more than 100 of vaccine currently going in phase 3 trial. Means we have phase 3 trial, there are hundreds of vaccine. And around there are 12 vaccines they have got approval across the world for emergency use in different countries in this world. And these vaccines are Moderna, 
फाइजर वैक्सीन कोविशील्ड कोवैक्सीन स्पूतनिक एंड बी ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट दिस वैक्सीन वन मोर जॉनसन एंड जॉनसन सिंगल डोज वैक्सीन देर आर फ्यू वैक्सीन देर आर करंटली इन डेवलपमेंट इन इंडिया लाइक जाइडोस्कोप नेजल वैक्सीन देर आर सो मेनी वैक्सीन राइट नाउ एंड वी आर फॉर्चुनेट इनफ वी वर एबल टू डेवलप दीज वैक्सीन इन अ वेरी शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम लेस देन वन ईयर नॉर्मली ड्यूरेशन टू डेवलप ए गुड वैक्सीन इज मोर देन एट टू टेन ईयर्स बट डिस्पाइट दिस ह्यूज because of this huge pressure on this our scientists and because of this huge pandemic we were able to develop these vaccine within very short of time of period and that was one of the golden time for us after development of these vaccine currently there are around i told you around hundreds of vaccine and around uh, in different phases of development 25 25 back candidate already in phase 3 trials and so far 12 vaccine have been authorized in several countries now vaccine program in india there are only two vaccine i have told you covis covaxin and covishield those who are authorized for use third sputnik in is in development phase it will be coming soon in the market i think within one, one or two week only it will get approval so we will have third vaccine also and these all three vaccine are very effective they are very successful they are very safe their efficacy rate is very high their side effects are very less the so covaxin is developed by bharat biotech covishield is developed by serum institute of india and oxford university and with the recent data we have got to know that covaxin having around 81% of the efficacy and covishield is having around 70% 70 to 80% of the efficacy and they i told you that there are covishield covishield vaccine is developed from the spike protein it is a non replicating uh, vaccine and it developed in the weekend version of adenovirus in the chim pages and this vaccine is readily available in india we have a lot of stock in india and serum shot of india one of the largest product production of production house of vaccines they have large quantity of vaccine and they even they are supp- not supply even they are supplying to india and also supplying to different parts of world different countries of world for this um, this vaccine covaxin covaxin is whole cell vaccine it is inactivated or killed vaccine and in means it is a killed vaccine it is not able to <coughs> trigger the disease but it triggers the immune response of the host whenever we inoculate this vaccine and the side effects are very less of for this vaccine i think that we should always aware aware the public regarding the efficacy and side effects of the vaccine the both vaccines are very efficacy i told you who recommends whatever vaccine it have, if it have more than 50% of efficacy it should be <coughs> given to the public means and the, these vaccines have more than 70% of efficacy and the side effect that like local side effect if be somebody is having and they have been given injection at deltoid they can have local pain redness swelling on that area and it will persist for only 2 to 3 days and systemic side effect person can have fatigue a fever body ache malaise joint pain chills and flu like symptoms these symptoms also persist not more than 3 to 4 days and simple medication like paracetamol can be helpful so therefore we should tell everybody they should go and they should take vaccine and we have given in our hospital thousands of doses to senior citizens and healthcare workers frontline workers and nobody has any serious side effect we all know doses are it, it has to be 0.5 ml and given intramuscularly deep and that the two dose interval should be more than 28 days they have to given one month apart <coughs> minimum ideally one if if it is delay it is not but it's not a problem but the minimum interval is one month it can be given after one month two month three month and if there is a gap is higher around two to three month then immunogenicity response is also bigger but we have to assess the risk and benefit ratio therefore it, doses should be given one month apart and single dose give, gives you only 30 to 40 percent of the immunity and after two doses and after 15 days of second dose you will get maximum benefit of that vaccine so therefore we should always use the precautions after giving taking the vaccine also pricing we know it is freely free available at the government centers and currently we are charging 250 rupees at private centers and government has purchased this vaccine at quite cheap rates from these product production houses we have a sufficient stock of covishield and covaxin inside the india 
we know the vaccination program has this year we have rolled out in not india it was world's largest vaccination program in india and we have given the priority to healthcare workers already healthcare workers has been given the vaccine frontline workers has been given the vaccine now we are covering more than 45 years of the age with comorbidities in more than 60 years of the population right now we know all um, each and everything of this i think we also know the how to be registered on the covin app to get the vaccine vaccine box i have told you we have to give two doses of vaccine to get the apart there are few faqs can be on covid vaccine also i think it is a important area regarding covid vaccine we should know <clears throat> you can get vaccine on any designated hospitals or centers across the india they have been approved by government of india or state government and the data is readily available on the covin web as covin app or covin websites how to register we everybody know on the covin app you can register or through uh, this uh, <clears throat> rqc you can register and you need only your aadhar card or any id proof there is no option or whatever vaccine is available in your center either covid shield or covax it has to be given currently we don't have choice course we know this is free of course at government center and 250 doses at private centers it is mandatory not it is not mandatory it is voluntary to take vaccine you have to give consent for the vaccine but i will highly recommend everybody should take this vaccine whenever it is possible currently it is possible for more than 45 years and more than 60 years of population only whenever it is available for you you should get it it's very safe and efficacious vaccine and it, it will not protect you also it will protect your near and dear ones your family members if you are vaccinated and we will have a hard immunity soon if 60 to 70% population is vaccinated in next 36 3 to 6 month can a person who is having covid 19 confirmed or suspect infection can be vaccinated no you have to wait at least 14 to 15 days after the disappearance of the last symptom i think we know face mask social distancing is necessary yeah i have already told you face mask social distancing all precautions all preventive measures we have to take after getting the vaccine also because this vaccine is not preventing from the acquiring infection these vaccines are preventing you from developing the severe illness severe uh, <clears throat> complications and death currently we have not data that can ensure that they are preventing from the infection or transmission or preventing from the transmission of infection therefore we should always use all the precautions till we are clear from this pandemic are the vaccines safe i have already told three or four times that the vaccines are very safe and everybody should everybody should go for this we know there are priority of groups and it is compulsory to yeah it is very compulsory and to take both the doses of vaccine and it is also advisable that you should to, to take second dose of the same vaccine if you have covid shield then you should take second dose of covid shield if you have co vaccine then you should take second dose of co vaccine only you should not change the vaccine for the second dose otherwise you will not have good response immune response can there is so many questions regarding can cancer a diabetic patient hypertension patient or comorbid patient kidney patient asthma patient they can take vaccine yes they should be take take they should take this vaccine and <coughs> they, they are on the on the priority list <clears throat> because if they get covid infection or covid disease their complication will be very high in these patient and death rate will be very high therefore these group of patients should be given vaccine on priority basis <clears throat> i told you all this till date there is no cure for covid 19 and mass vaccination is the only option to prevent its spread and death caused by it continue with all covid appropriate behaviors cap and i will tell i will request everybody you should put pressure on government the vaccine should be open for everybody all age group because we have a lot of vaccine right now readily available with our production house and the capacity should be increased and it has to be given 24 into 7 so that as early as possible we should inoculate more than 60 to 70% of our population to get hard immunity across the india thank you so much thank you so much for listening and bearing me
any question i will happy to answer thank you dr dk gupta that was a very informative uh, session uh, at especially at this current uh, uh, point of time because everyone were having so many doubts and so many queries regarding the vaccination that is being going on these days and uh, yes you have answered several of the questions in the presentation itself and uh, yeah if if anyone is having any questions from the participants they can make use of their raise hand option or post your questions in the comment box so that a uh, uh, speaker is ready to answer your questions anyone uh, who want to interact they uh, they can make use of raised hand option which is uh, available at the right hand side of the panel and uh, i'll make you available to interact with the speaker uh, i have few questions dr dk gupta before uh, someone asks a uh, question for you uh, see uh, i was being hearing that uh, those uh, uh, those people who have been affected with this covid 19 or corona uh, it it was said that uh, their uh, life span will be reduced is that uh, correct pardon i couldn't get a question a person who is affected and cured from the uh, covid 19 it is said that uh, the life span of the people will be uh, affected that means the life span will be decreased no it's not fully true but if somebody having a symptomatic infection or symptomatic infection with very mild disease it will not affect life span if somebody is having severe illness developed ards acute respiratory distress syndrome they have developed multi organ dysfunction they were on Okay, I see for long days it can affect for those. Okay, and uh, what about the people who are affected with COVID nineteen and uh, and were having uh, smoking and alcohol habits in prior? Yeah, if somebody is have is a smoker or a alcoholic and he is having COVID nineteen infection or COVID nineteen disease, he is more prone to develop severe complications like acute respiratory distress syndrome, kidney failure, heart failure, multi organ dysfunction, even death. Death rate is high in these group of populations. Okay, and uh, more more of the pe most of the population, what they are thinking is, yeah, it, COVID nineteen. If we get affected, uh, it is getting healed in fourteen days, and we are back to the normal. And that is the intention people are having, and that is the reason why people are not getting vaccinated. So uh, we will have to raise our voice on this point. I think I are you asking regarding that we should not uh, come to the birthplace after uh, America. Uh, No, no. Like uh, many of the people are thinking that uh, if if at all uh, we get affected with the COVID nineteen, uh, mm -hmm. obviously after ten or fourteen days with uh, with some medications we are coming out of it and we are uh, resulting uh, into negative, and that is the reason why people are just thinking, yeah, that's a normal thing. Uh, why should I get vaccinated? Is the thing. Okay, so I will let you know that the transmission rate of this disease is very high. It is very contagious. However, death rate is less. It is around 1.5 or 2 percent across the globe, and average, I mean, in India, it is around 1.5 percent. It doesn't mean that you will not get affected. It doesn't mean you will not get have serious uh, complications. It doesn't mean you will not have death. Somebody ask somebody who is has suffered from severe illness, and he was or she was in ICU, and he was she was on ventilator or BiPAP or long term oxygen. There are few patients I know they are still on oxygen. So therefore, you will not take it lightly. It can be not life-threatening for everybody, but we have seen patients who are in younger age group. They are not suffering from any comorbid condition. They were very serious, very critical. Even some of them have death also. But please aware of this. We will not. We should not take it lightly. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, these are the questions from my end, and I see no more questions from the audience. so i'll just uh, end this uh, particular presentation at this uh, stage and i again thank you dr dk you so for uh, uh, his time and uh, spending uh, his time with us and uh, uh, you know delivering such a wonderful uh, session thank you dr dk gupta and uh, yes our next uh, presentation will be uh, from our speaker dr uh, murugeshwaran who is uh, from uh, ayush and the track will be traditional medicine Dr R Murugeshwaran deputy director in medicinal plants at National Medical uh, Medicinal Plants Board Ma uh, Ministry of Ayush Government of India New Delhi has contributed for uh, survey and cultivation of medicinal plants program for more than 23 years as research officer botany scientists level 4 at the Regional Research Institute of Unani Medicine Chennai and Srinagar Kashmir and uh, assistant director in charge 
Drug Standardization Research Institute, PLIM Campus, Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh, under the Central Council for Research Institute of Unani Medicine, and a member of Ayush Government of India, New Delhi. He has started his case career as botanist in the Tropical Gene Pool Reserve, Nilgiris District, Tamil Nadu Forest Department, and joined as a uh, research officer, Botany in Central Council for Research in Unani Medicine in 1997. He has also completed his PG and doctoral degree in Botany at Bharatiya University, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. I request uh, Dr. Uh, Murugeshwaran to come on to the backstage for the com upcoming session. Yeah, Dr. Murugeshwaran, thank yeah, you. Uh, yeah, please uh, turn on your video and uh, share your screen and start the presentation. And uh, the upcoming presentation will be on role of medicinal plants in COVID-19 pandemic issues and challenges by Dr. Murugeshwaran. Yeah, is it visible now? Yeah, you're visible and uh, yes, I can yeah, see yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kalthondra, Mantondra, Kalathirku, Muthondriya, Mutha Tamilku and Mughal Vanakkam. It means my first salutation to my mother tongue Tamil language, which is one of the ancient language in the world. I respected uh, dignitaries and the organizing secretaries and his team, participants and other eminent personalities who is in the present conference, international conference, recent trends in life sciences. Now I'm going to uh, talk about the role of medicinal plants in COVID-19 pandemic issues and challenges. There are a lot of medicinal plants have been used in the uh, COVID-19 and as well as in other uh, times also since from the uh, ancient period. Many of the medicinal plants are used in the different uh, utilization, different aspects. For example, see indigenous systems are there, folk medicinal system, tribal medicines and ethnobotanically important plants and commercially cultivated plants and pharmaceutical industries are using many of the plants and apart from that food sources as a food supplement also we are using many of the medicinal plants in the recent past but there are a lot of medicinal plants under threat due to various reasons there are issues are there challenges are that we are we are facing the medicinal plants are facing a lot of threat uh, become uh, many of the medicinal plants in the RET categories, rare, threatened, and endangered categories. See, as far as the NMBB are concerned, the National Medicinal Plant Board is uh, supporting for promoting the medicinal plants uh, conservation, cultivation, and research and development activities. As far as the cultivation are concerned, uh, we are giving the subsidy for 30%, uh, 50%, and 75% for in depends upon the species, uh, high volume species, uh, high uh, value species, and uh, depends upon the cultivation uh, vegetational pattern, Kashmir to Kanyakumari, in all the area throughout the country. We are uh, promoting the cultivation and uh, we have uh, guidelines for each programs for uh, herbal garden uh, activities and IEC activities with one of the other uh, activities which is the supporting for the conference training programs and seminars. In R&D uh, we have uh, given for the financial assistance for uh, research and development for uh, recent advances for, for example in phytochemistry, pharmaceutical industries, they can uh, universities, college people, they can, they can uh, offer these, they can submit their proposals. Uh, for we have given uh, we have uh, uh, given all the guidelines in our NMPP websites. So please, you can. You, I just my request to you, all of them to you have to visit our NMPP website. There you can get uh, more information about the cultivation and conservation activities, R and D, uh, herbal garden activities, and IEC activities. Apart from that, marketing of medicinal plant. We have uh, each other uh, portal. It is uh, one of the important portal uh, which is useful for the buyers and sellers meet who can uh, sell their products who can buy uh, their uh, raw materials uh, and you can know the uh, price of the current price of the today's price of the raw materials so these are all the uh, activities uh, is being carried out by the nmbb coming under the ministry of ice government of india so when we 
talk about uh, medicinal plants there are common medicinal plants rare and threatened medicinal plants, endangered medicinal plants, and endemic medicinal plants endemic it is native species of particular region a particular area a particular district so we can give, say that uh, endemic species but in the covid 19 knowingly or unknowingly we have used many of the medicinal plants in day to day life in the kitchen we have many of the medicinal plants just i'm going to highlight some of the species how we are replaced and uh, i'll i'll take you to the western ghats region and uh, for uh, in the travel in the forest areas just i'll go little fast because i have to give many of the slides the time is very restricted and i i'll give little first try to follow me please so medicinal plant in the day to day life we are using many of the plants in every day every day in knowingly unknowingly so one by one i can uh, go through the slides and you can also have the uh, use utilization of the medicinal plants plants can be consumed we are consuming as a tea vegetables decoction or greenies or whatever in essential oils and even medicines uh, uh, and food supplement we are using medicinal uh, aromatic plants and spices too See, one of the species it's garlic <clears throat> we are using every day, day many of the people are using that it is uh, good for the uh, prevent the heart diseases and lower the cholesterol and blood pressure too so it's also good for the digestive in the health and another one plant this is a tulsi i think this is the queen of medicinal plants we used to say well, that it's a queen of medicinal plants it's a very good relief of uh, stress relief uh, promotes the long uh, life and it's uh, uh, treats the cow most most of the uh, herbal uh, cow syrups comes in the market it has uh, tulsi is one of the major uh, ingredient so these are the some of the uses of the tulsi plants and we are using mint we are in every we, we, every home we used to take this mint and tea and other activities it's a very good uh, immunity booster and it's uh, good for digestion and uh, even expels cough and respiratory health and another plant is a fenugreek methi so so also we are using uh, daily in our daily life and it's very good for the control of the cholesterol and it simplifies appetite and purifies the blood blood uh, bloods and uh, also uh, lowers the blood pressure and it's good for the joint pain and diabetes and another one it's uh, seeds of the fennel and fennel seeds it's uh, so uh, we we are using daily and it is uh, good for the cough and cholesterol control the cholesterol and improve the eyesight even cure the uh, good for the acidity and uh, it's good for the breast, breast milk too uh, it's another plant it's coriander it is, a, it is a, it's available in our kitchen uh, we are uh, using it but many of them know, don't know that about its medicinal uses it has a very good rich antioxidants and it clears urine uh, retention and improves eye digestion and regulates menstrual cycles and good for the acting salt it seeds again and uh, apart from uh, other plant it is a ginger even 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 nowadays uh, in the covid 19 uh, nobody have recommended uh, for uh, modern uh, energy drink like bone vita or Arlix or uh, some other, uh, many of the uh, drinks comes in the market. People are uh, referred only for ginger or uh, lemon and even tulsi or gilo, tinospora, cardifolia. So this is the this is the uh, uh, this is uh, how the impact of the medicinal plants in the COVID nineteen. So ginger is one of the important plants. It, it, it gives the good for the digestion and it is controls the blood pressure and it treats the cold, cough, and flu and asthma. Yeah, it, it relieves the <coughs> menstrual pains too. And another one plant is clove. It creates a, a heat in our body and it is high in antioxidants and protect against cancer and good in liver health and regulates the blood pressure and promote the bone health. Uh, and reduce the stomach ulcers too. And another is one of the Darchini. So it's also one of the recommended plant in the COVID-19. Uh, this this is uh, good for the very good antioxidant plant and it's uh, anti-inflammatory properties and good in uh, for our disease too. Lower blood pressures and uh, protect, protect against the uh, cancer activity, cancer and other bacterial fungal infections.
and black pepper so a very 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 one of the antipyretic plant it's good for uh, fever uh, it is it is it deoxyphies de your body and prevents cancer and and cleans intestine and stomach so wonderful uses such a medicinal uh, 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 products these uh, aromatic spices and aromatic plants we are daily we are using but uh, it gives a very good uh, uh, impact in our health uh, activities and another plants garama it is it's also we are using daily and you see that it is a very good antioxidant and slower blood pressures and it is fighting against the cancer compounds you see another anti inflammatory effects and digestive problems and treats it is good in uh, uh, dental uh, active uh, diseases and also it's a very good uh, antibacterial effects now, now uh, there are many of the medicinal plant formulations in the Unani systems uh, we have uh, given. But this is a very one of the uh, uh, plant. You can see some uh, Arica cutter cheese there and um, uh, triple stress. These are the ingredients. And this, uh, another plant is Guli uh, Abbas. Uh, we used to tell that beauty uh, monosperma. So these are the main ingredients in this. It is in these formulations good for. Uh, uh, Lycodia for female disorders, and another uh, one of the medicinal plants. You can see. Just I am giving some of the examples. There are a lot of medicinal plants. These ingredients are poly herbal, poly uh, compound uh, herbals. These formulations. And just I am giving the uh, major ingredient, which is the present in the uh, formulations. So this is uh, one of the cardiac tonic and the immune system we, we are giving for this. Uh, uh, the uh, amla and uh, uh, philanthe semplica and termalia bellerica it is one of the uh, ingredients on these plants so another uh, this is on shrub some of the slides i will skip i will i will go for uh, another uh, some main uh, our uh, uh, issues and challenges uh, one see this is another uh, plant good morning sir another one health with aapki this is ginger water and another one plant <laughs> now, <laughs> now this is the, uh, <laughs> this is uh, ois kada which is the giving the one of the immune boost in the recent covid 19 the ingredients asimum sanctum Piper nigrum and cinnamon, uh, xylanigum darshini and ginger, ginger. These four plants have been uh, ingredients of this COVID-19. Uh, this uh, ice card, uh, which, uh, which is uh, manufactured by the ice ministry and it has been uh, throughout uh, distributed throughout India. So it is uh, very good for the uh, immune booster and it is, gives the disease resistance. And uh, you can see the uh, another uh, uh, the area of our country, even Kashmir to Kanyakumari, there are Himalayas, and even tropical, uh, even uh, uh, temperate region forests, and some of the northeast area, we can have different type of climatic conditions. And in Western Ghats, you see in southern area, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and Kerala states, that is mostly covered by the Western Ghats, more than 1,600 kilometers of region. There are rich biodiversity, rich floristic wealth of, uh, in the Western Ghats, one of the mega bio, biodiversity spot. So in this, uh, 4,000 indigenous angiosperm species available. Out of this 4,000, about 1,500 species are, uh, are uh, endemic to the Western Ghats region. So it, it, it has very good medicinal potential. And some of the region of Western Ghats, even solar forest and different uh, evergreen forests, dry deciduous, different type of vegetational patterns. Now, yes, for the species the species diversity in India, we have 17,500 higher plants, 64 species are gymnosperms, 1,200 species of pteridophytes, and 2,850 species of bryophytes, and 2,021 species of lichens and 15,500 species for fungi and 6,500 species of algae are reported in the recently. Now, when we come to the threat, what are all the threats in the medicinal plant sector is uh, facing right now? The, uh, we can say over-exploitation, lack of awareness and urbanization, 
in proper collection and of raw materials that the collection is wild collection is too much in the cultivation that is why that national medicinal plant boards recommending even if the, there are a lot of uh, pharmaceutical industries are there only 20 percent has been from the cultivation uh, sector most of the raw materials coming from the wild 80 percent more than 80 percent of the raw materials coming from the wild so the natural uh, sources getting depletion uh, like anything so that is why we are promoting we are recommending and uh, even we are providing the finance uh, subsidy for cultivation of medicinal plants unless until if you go for the cultivation we have to lose many of the uh, medicinal plants that is a fact because al al almost many of the plants are in the ret category right now so and climatic changes and invasive species that is uh, also one of the big threat in the medicinal plants uh, facing right now now what is in invasive species we can see Invasive is nothing but it is a plant which is give it is an exotic plant or something. It has uh, growing gradually and uh, suppress the <coughs> other uh, uh, plant in the uh, environment. For example, I can give some of the example. See, drain area. Uh, this is a dicarbonate lane areas. This is one of the plant. It grows. It never allows any other plants. So even it, it, it is and now we are uh, controlling these plants. So so the, so uh, once the animals coming from the forest to uh, domestic area, there, there, there is no if there is no ground vegetation, automatically it is it it, it searches uh, its food for the, some other areas. So it automatically enters the domestic areas like that. Many of the plants are there. See, lantana camera. This plant is one of the dangerous plant even in Karnataka. The forest department has taken uh, initiation to eradicate the plant for this because it grows. It never allows any other ground vegetation. So only this is just like a monoculture. So this is the uh, invasive species. This type of invasive species has a great threat for the medicinal health. For another another one. Now. I have some uh, some network issues. Okay, uh, this is another hypomia species. You see how it has covered the tree. Even it, it it suppresses the tree too. It covers the tree, whole tree. So that much of uh, growth speed. So uh, these type of uh, plants uh, gives more threat. This is this is called we used to tell that uh, invasive species. So this is to be eradicated. And uh, in the uh, in the raw drug market, there are issues are there. Adaptation are there. We need a good lab, good infrastructure. There's another issues. Quality is another quality, and cost of products and quality and availability. Many of the formulation were not able to prepare manufactured by the industry due to non-availability of the some of the plant raw material. So this is another fact. So also these to be uh, taken into the consider, and we have to go for the cultivation. And another. Common curative disease. So we can yeah, see many of the uh, in the herbal uh, in the plants how they are utilizing. Even even uh, ethnobotany is there. Even tribal people are utilizing the medicinal herbs. So we'll see some of the tribal people how they are utilizing our the medicinal plants. See this blood purification, cough, cold, diabetes, all these uh, rheumatism, sexual disorders, skin diseases, stomach disorders. Even many of the uh, ailments have been treated by the medicinal plants through the ethnobotany. So, so one by one, I, I, I'll go a little fast. This is Abras Pericatorius. So one of the wonderful plant, it, it is common, but it's over exploitation is the threat for this plant. And you can see the it's Pantanas. It's a very good plant. In the, it is the, grows in the uh, swampy area. Uh, in the folk medicine, it is used for the uh, cold asthma and boils. So it, it is for its uh, threat is for forest degradation and urbanization. It is one of the uh, plant in the category of uh, uh, certain plants. See another another it's a Martinia anua. So another plant. So you see that this this Martinia this fruit the person is the ethnobotany the tribal man he is giving uh, a, a antidote for the uh, poisonous bites. So these fruit has been taken to the uh, tear the the uh, snack bite areas and he apply the medicines. So it, it, it is in the Kanyagumar district, a tribal community called Kani. 
so they 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 are utilizing this type of plants when we uh, when we compare with the modern literature also it has a very good uh, potential in the antidot activities so this root uh, decoction uh, is, is is used for the snack bite and another another plant is acorus clamus it is a very, very common plant uh, it, it is good for the you see it, it has a very good chemical composition too this common and over exploitation is the threat for this plant and this is another common plant uh, everyone knows that castor plant it's a resinous communis see it is good for jaundice constipation and body heat when i uh, when i collect when i was uh, looking at a, a tribal woman in the forest she, some leaf was uh, covered by her uh, uh, head and just i told her to remove the uh, cloth and she has removed her, uh, her turban and i have seen that the leaf was covered with head because the, it, 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 she, she says that it reduced their body heat in that leaf so it, it, this type of ethnobotanical information have been collected in many of the uh, tribal areas so another plant it is uh, it is alstonia scalaris as a tree species it grows even in the delhi also many of the areas it grows uh, i have seen this this is uh, another plant is good for toothache diarrhea and uh, headache and even fever so another other plant it is folk you see the folk medicine it is a very good uh, plant for aphrodisia it is a sexual disorder in males so this is uh, that cardiac arthritis this root has been used as a medicinal purpose this is coming under the rare and endangered category we need cultivation these type of species we need to promote uh, cultivation and these type of species for the conservation aspects so now See, this is aloe vera. See, even in the market also, I have seen this. Uh, people are in Karnataka. Uh, they they are giving as uh, massage or molis or something. And this it is good for uh, blisters and scales and also uh, it's good. It, it's it's ingredients. No, it's normally this is cosmetic uh, aspects of view. Um, uh, this aloe vera is very for doing wonder in the. skin disorders and other activities you see it has a very good alkyl components like corin so this is common and the cultivation also promoted uh, another uh, yet third of the plant drainaria quercifolia see this is this is uh, in the in in kulli uh, hills there is one part in the tamil nadu there there uh, the tribals used to prepare uh, as, uh, herbal soup it, this is the main ingredients they believe that it is a good, giving a general tonic a general health purpose so this is now the far far it is now become a rare in that area in the forest department state measures to control not to collect the plants so they restricted the collection of these plants so such a uh, such a uh, rules are also very much needed for the rare and endangered plant species so another uh, rare plant and a rare and endemic plants endemic to western ghats too this is uh, mukuna prurians mukuna prurians this is this is a wonderful plant for the sexual disorders and 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 eldopa yet a bioactive alkali uh, mukina uh, and another biosterostral is the it has been uh, good for the parkinson disease uh, nervous disorders so it's a wonderful plant it is good for this uh, uh, eldopa is taken care of from this plant only uh, and agil marmolus so very common but it is uh, wild distribution is very poor it is only available in the temples so when the uh, natural vegetation very poor uh, distribution is there agilmarmulus so it's a good uh, good alkali composition is there and it is uh, good for uh, vomiting and throat infections too so it's common and rare category mm -hmm. now this is uh, raxburgia aglaia raxburgia species this is a, a evergreen component and it's good in uh, Uh, alkali composition and it's good for the insect and scorpion bites see this is croton tiglium croton tiglium is a wonderful plant for the skin disorders and constipation so it's also become rare it's a natural resource its natural distribution is very poor so only it is uh, promoting the cultivation only now another wonderful plant limonia acidissima you see this its chemical chemical composition alkaloids vanins flavonoids are rich in this plant so it's also uh, only available in the temple and uh, like that and it's natural the natural vegetation is very poor uh, distribution so this is also needs for the cultivation and another uh, plant for the uh, gymnema this is the plant for given for the di diabetics 
diabetics be, uh, one of the ingredient in the many of the formulations in the herbal formulations so if see this is good for uh, stomach disorder and indigestion too it has a very good alkaloids saponins and flavonoids it's also become red because it's wild uh, collection is too much wild collection is too much so it will become slowly getting a rare category uh, and another uh, plant you see this is uh, celestus paniculatus uh, even I, I i able to collect it very hardly two three places only in uh, western guards it is a category endangered category uh, uh, it's over exploitation and uh, habitat dis uh, destruction the forest department and you know, there is uh, many of the forest areas also clearing that urbanization due to all the things uh, this this species become uh, endangered so it needs cultivation it needs promotes its conservation activities if uh, if any farmers if you can recommend for this type of plants to be uh, promoted in the cultivation uh, activities it is very much needed it's a very good plant for the sexual stability and as per the stresimosis uh, it is cultivation is uh, pro promoting in different areas yeah, we are uh, supporting for the financial system it has very good chemical composition and also rare plant the cultivation is taken up now uh, another uh, cancer carandas this is a uh, you know, plant of the uh, dry deciduous forest and it's very good uh, alkaloid components with flavonoids and glycosides see it's good for general health and appetite it's good in appetizer another plant you can see this is a uh, spaniculata this is a uh, good for these poisonous spikes and the person i'm, I'm interacting with the uh, wild uh, uh, tribal uh, ideas so he is he's the man person giving a, a medicine to the uh, snake bite it is one of the ingredients this plant even in the covid 19 there is a kabosura kudinir in sita system of medicine this is the one of the ingredients out of 15 ingredients this is one of the ingredients in the kabosura kudinir which is very effective in the covid 19 and tamil nadu and other areas it has been given a lot so this also needs cultivation now now it is a uh, leaf of a uh, white exonegunto it's a common uh, plant it is good for cough and it has very good chemical composition and uh, you can see flavonoids and it's uh, other uh, phytosteroids to be present in this plant it's good for good for cold and headache now it's an interesting plant you can see this is the opioriza mungos so this uh, this is even you even snake and it, it, name itself you can see this mongoose mongoose means that it's uh, uh, mongoose always fights with the uh, snakes finally mongoose wins win the fight and what happened no after uh, uh, fight with the snake it goes to spread over this plant to remove the poison so that much capable of this plant this is a very good uh, plant for poisonous bites it has uh, uh, removes the poisonous so it is it is it's, it's used in the ethnobotany and even modern literature also we have the same uh, legislation is there and it has a very good composition of campothecin so it is uh, it is for the it is a uh, campothecin for the cancer treatment see another uh, uh, plant uh, it is cyclia peltata uh, it is good in the stomach disorders and indigestion see the chemical composition wonderful chemical alkalides are there so this this is need, this type of plants needs for the cultivation and the conservation activities Another plant, there is Cantons, is one of the family, Papillonaceae family member, evergreen component. It, it is good for the cough and diarrhea. See, chemical combustion also, it is a very good cucumberian, isoflavonoids also there, and this is glycosides, and it, 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 its status is very rare, 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 rare plant of the Western Guards, and it, it, it needs cultivation. It needs cultivation and conservation activities. Now, you can see, this is the Diaspirus paniculata these plants are only uh, you can see in the forest areas only not in the cultivation and you see the alkalides you see the chemical combustion 82 percent of alkalides are present in this plant good is a rare category and uh, it is good in stomach disorders and skin diseases now melina asiatica another plant it is uh, good for fever joint pain and rheumatism it is in the category of vulnerable category and it's good combustion of alkaloid glycosides saponins steroids terribinoids proteins all these things are present in this plant see this is a uh, wild mystica decalitis we have cultivated mystica fragrance but it is a wild one see how this it is good in disorder uh, skin disorders and constipations and it has a very good chemical composition and uh, it become a very rare category now 
Uh, you, you see, this is the Ravan Priya treatment I know. It's a wonderful plant for the blood pressure. It is, it, it, it is also used for the poop medicine, dysentery, fever, and uh, uh, even boils and uh, poisonous boils also it has been given as a medicinal one. Uh, when we when we interact with the for, uh, for tribal people in different areas, we are getting very interesting information. Uh, and it, it has, you see the chemical, it has uh, reserpine is there, ajimaline is there, it is uh, uh, in the Yunani system. The Ajimal Khan, he has uh, made wonderful research on this plant. It is endangered and endemic to Western Ghats. Uh, another wonderful plant, it is Saraka Soga. This is the plant, uh, I can say it's an excellent plant for the female disorders. Now, now this plant has become rare and endangered category, and uh, and uh, it is close. Normally, it is uh, much available in the Kerala state. What happened now? The National Medicine Plant Board is uh, planning for the Asoka plantation throughout India, from Itanagar to uh, Trivandrum. So, all the um, most of the areas already identified, and we are uh, working with our state medicine plant board, and we are going to plant this. This bark, you know, this bark is wonderful effect for the female disorders. This is the demand in the pharmaceutical industry also getting very demanding, and it promotes. Uh, uh, we are uh, having the uh, processing units also. We are going to set up in different areas, and uh, once it grows, and uh, it will give you a very good income to the farmers too. So to increase the farmers' livelihood, the cultivation activities are promoted based on the demand and requirement of the industries. Already we have tied up with the, many of the pharmaceutical industries and their demands and their requirement. For example, if Asvaganda is required for their own industry for 100 tons or 500 tons, that will be promoted in the cultivation sector. So this is, this is the way now we are working in the medicine plant board. So another plant this is uh, Glorious or Superba, a wonderful plant of the state flower of Tamil Nadu. It is a cultivation is highly taken in the uh, one of the high number of uh, areas have been occupied in the Tamil Nadu region. It is a seed has very good uh, uh, medicinal potential and it's used in many of the other uh, modern medicine too. See, you can uh, it, it has uh, alkaloid, chlonides, and glycoside like phenols also. They also very good chemical composition, and it is uh, become rare now. But the cultivation has been promoted like anything. It is good for joint pain too. Another plant, semicarpus anacardium. You can see that it's old medicine. It's very good for the hemorrhoids and bowel diseases, constipation, and bronchitis. So it's even it's used in the uh, skin disease and rheumatism. It's also rare. It's, so it's, it's a rare, very rarely found uh, in the wild. So this, this also needs for the cultivation. And it's a wonderful plant for the stomach disorders, diarrhea, dysentery, and the stomach disorders. It's, it's, it's available in the psyllium uh, ask in the markets also. So it, it is very good uh, chemical combustion, and this also become a rare one. Now, this is a Bocnania lensen, a tree species. Uh, it grows uh, in the uh, hilly regions. Uh, it has a very good alkalis and plethrys. It's also rare and good for wounds and diarrhea. The leaves and gums are used as a medicinal one, medicinal purposes. And this is uh, Western Guards region, one of the uh, right here, Tinctoria. It, it, it has very good uh, uh, medical uh, medicinal uses. Even in the Siddha, uh, it is wonderful use for the psoriasis, skin disorders. And in the folk medicine, you see, can it is very good for uh, uh, tooth pain and wounds. It is endemic and common, is, uh, but uh, threat is forest degradation and over exploitation. Now, this is another plant, uh, Cartoneregum spinosa. This is this is a plant. plant uh, now you can see this is the evolvus alcinitis this is the herb it's also so, it's a uh, small reminder and, we are running out of time because uh, okay yeah uh, yeah yeah I'll, I'll go a little first and i will complete it okay and uh, this is another pro and and this is uh, you can see uh it's not purpose larifolius it's an endemic species and another one uh, it is uh uh, Terracus marsupium and another plant is Archlogia indica. It is a rare and endangered category. It needs uh, cultivation. It needs conservation activities. And you see that it's uh, antara scandens. The seeds, you see how much uh, fruits are, a very lengthy fruit. It's, uh, it's, it's an evergreen component. 
uh, it is good in uh, medicinal uses and it is uh, clearandrum serratum another plant and you can see this is uh, agumon mexicana this is the plant which is uh, adaptation in the mustard so <laughs> this is another uh, issue you can see this is another plant electrus isora it's uh, good in uh, dandruff and uh, hair falling and uh, this is uh, calcinia grandis yes we know that uh, we, we use it as a vegetable also uh, it is very good composition chemical composition now this is the gilo when covid 19 we are uh, using as a gilo uh, uh, one of the plant for the antipyretic and this is the uh, decaction has been given for the gilo uh, covid 19 it has a very good chem chemical composition and this style of asthmatica good in asthma bronchitis and dysentery and it is tenorpora cardifolia, tenorpora uh, termelia chevula. It's a wonderful plant. Uh, it has a uh, uh, very good chemical composition, and uh, you can see it is used in uh, toothache and uh, constipation. It's melotus plepensis, endemic species of Western Guards. It's one very good uh, in skin diseases. In Yunani system, we have one, Ayil, Camilla. It is prepared from this one. And Anagasia is latifolia, another plant. And this is hydrophila uh, arculata. And it is another one of the endangered plant of uh, gymnosperm, Nitamula. You see, this is uh, Solanum suratens and Ficus esimosa and Chesnellis. And some of the we have worked on this, some of the applications we have in this sector. And these are some of the conclusion. I will conclude this because so whether, whether uh, there are different. Uh, um, reasons, many external factors, most of the plants have been uh, become rare in a certain category. So we need conservation, we need awareness. Awareness is very poor. So the modern scientists and the students come forward to, to promote the uh, this RET species. So it is very important. And also it is a challenge for the animal uh, pharmaceutical industries to develop in the drug development research programs in the indigenous system of herbal medicine. In fact, awareness is very much needed because 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 uh, the farmers, the laymen, they don't know about the medicinal uses of the plants and how to conservation. So the farmers and the researchers and students, please, you come forward and uh, you can take up your research. You don't worry about the uh, size of the research. It should be, uh, it should be, it should be. You have to give the dedication and uh, hard work. Yes, Abdul Kalam said, dedication rather is the best medicine to kill the disease called failure. So don't worry about the size. You can put your efforts, put your uh, uh, dedication, and uh, you can start up your work. Because small things can be always, I strongly believe, small things can make big change. So I thank uh, the organizer and other uh, uh, participants team for providing me the opportunity to share my uh, experience in the uh, medicinal plant sector. And thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Dr. Murugeshwan, for that uh, wonderful uh, talk. Yes, we'll have to uh, definitely focus on uh, our uh, traditional uh, herbs and all, which are naturally available. And uh, I ask for any questions, if there are, uh, so that uh, we, uh, we, we can interact with speaker for further. I see, no, I see no questions for this session, so I'll just uh, move forward uh, with the next topic of the track traditional medicine. That next topic would be on uh, natural compounds. And uh, before we uh, move to the next topic, I would like to uh, convey my uh, grateful thanks to Dr. Murugeshwaran for uh, allotting his uh, time and uh, sharing his experiences and uh, his views on the traditional medicine, especially in the field of Ayush. And our next uh, topic would be on uh, natural compounds. And uh, Dr. Rachna will be speaking uh, on this particular topic. Dr. Rachna, uh, I would like to ask you to come on to the backstage. And uh, yes, before we get into the uh, talk, I'll give a brief introduction of Dr. Rachna. Dr. Rachna is an associate uh, professor of Depart Department of Biotechnology, um, JIIT Noida. And she has obtained her master's and PhD degree from IIT Roorkee and IIT Bombay, respectively. She has many international publications, patents, books, monographs on her credit. She has been working on natural products to analyze their mechanism of action and esteem, estimate their efficacy and safety level. 
and her topic of presentation will be like natural products for the treatment of multiple diseases and disorders i would like to mention that dr rachna had helped us uh, a lot uh, to conduct this particular uh, virtual conference i would like to invite dr rachna to the backstage Uh, Dr. Rachna is uh, facing some issue with uh, her presentation, so I will move uh, move forward with the next session. That is uh, uh, the next topic of this today's uh, uh, track will be Unani, and uh, I request uh, Professor S M Arif Jaidi uh, to be ready for the next presentation. And before starting the next presentation, I will give a brief introduction of Dr. Uh, Professor S M Arif Jaidi. Professor S M Arif Jaidi is working as an associate professor in Department of Surgery for Unani Medicine at Jamia Hamdard, India. His research interests include biotechnology, toxicology, microbiology, chemistry, analytical chemistry, quality assurance, risk management, pharmaceutical technology, pharmaceutical formulation, and drug development. And today's topic of his will be a diabetic food saved for um, amputation through Unani Medicine. I invite uh, Professor. Arif uh, uh, Jaidi it to come on to the backstage. Yes, we can see your screen now. Uh, let me find out that my this. Uh, you can drag that out. You can drag that. I I yeah. I'm looking for PowerPoint. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You can yeah. draw now. Okay. Thanks, Claude. And now you can can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, and I can see your screen. You can go ahead. Okay. Thanks, God. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that I'm sorry for troubling you so much. That if I, it is new platform for me, this air meet, so that uh, there is a lot of problem. Uh, anyhow, it is my privilege uh, that you have been. I have been invited by you for this uh, auspicious international uh, conference. Though it is on a short time, and uh, uh, before going to the topic that I as, as I have given earlier uh, uh, that uh, diabetic who saved from amputation through Unani medicine, I would like to share you that uh, uh, I would like to take only five minutes just to let uh, the people know. I do not know how many people knows about Unani medicine or not, so that uh, uh, history within three to five minutes I will conclude. Thereafter, I will take uh, the topic is that diabetic food. Okay, so that uh, going through the history of Unani medicine, uh, you see it is a quite old medicine, running and in the domain in more than 2,500 years, and which has its origin in Greece. And this medicine uh, got enriched by imbibing what was best in the contemporary system of traditional medicine. In a number of countries like Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Persia, India, China, and other Middle East and far Eastern countries, so that traveling through these countries, these medicines came to India, and further introduced by and in India it is introduced by Arabs, so that uh, Arab countries were the last from where the medicine reported to the or uh, came uh, to the India. And in India, it so it uh, soon uh, took firm roots in the soil of in our country. In India, many new drugs added to, and these Indian drugs taken to clinical trial further, and as a result of their experimentation, added numerous native drugs to their own system. Uh, you know that uh, during the British period. This, these Unani medicines and the Ayurvedic medicine as well suffered a setback, and uh, in consequence of that, the development of these medicine became hampered uh, due to the uh, travel of uh, government patronage at the time. But since the system enjoyed faith among the masses, as it was uh, in the practice uh, in last 2005 India, so that the system remained continued and to be practiced still. The development of Unani medicine as well as other Indian
the national health policy also lays emphasis on optimal utilization of indian system of medicine in primary health care delivery system now there is a separate ministry ministry of ayush working for this system in the country the unani system of medicine is practiced across the country and uh, you see in other countries too as a beneficial system now coming to the type of treatments available in unani system of medicine which has the following modes of treatment to treat an element depending upon the nature of the element and its causes you see the first one is diet to therapy diet to therapy which by taking advantage of that different diets the elements of the patient is being treated through modification of diet that is in diet to therapy the other one is a large with the word down the pharmacotherapy in which the number of medicines used as a, you see available a best medicine to the system because it has taken from the several countries best they have absorbed into it that is known as pharmacotherapy and the third one is ilaj biliyad known as surgery and the fourth one which is the emerging area nowadays known as the regional area and which there is a lot of you see a hijama known as cupping reaching various sections and uh, several other methods are being practiced so that these are the four type of uh, treatments available uh, in unani medicines now coming to the topic uh, directly strength now strength of unani system medicine i can say because uh, you know i am clinician and working uh, on patients now 30 years and the topic of the day is limb amputation save from amputation through unani medicine you see Limb amputation is the only option in most of the cases of gangrenous wounds, and you will be uh, and uh, you see that uh, gangrenous wound of the lower leg is a relatively common condition among adults that causes pain and social distress. You see, most of the patients which are diabetics uh, when they have wounds, wound doesn't ever heal, converted into gangre gangrene. And ultimately, the fact is, patient has to go for amputations, and obviously, it is a distress for the patient and a mental agony and physical agony as well. And you will be in wonder to know that all over the world, every 30 seconds, a limb becomes amputated. It is a very worrying, very very worrying something. So that I have chosen this topic because I am working on these problems since last 10 years. You see, this is my patient. Uh, this is uh, this gentle lady, 60 years old, a resident of uh, NCR, and she was suffering from diabetic foot. And patient was advised to go for amputation, so that by uh, fear of amputation, the patient uh, looks for some alternative therapy and ultimately landed to our hospital for getting unani treatment. At the time of uh, coming to our hospital, patient was having severe pain, so that uh, she was uh, receiving uh, painkiller uh, parental uh, medications, I mean injections, several injections, painkiller injection, along with the uh, uh, antibiotics. She was getting augmentin thrice in a day, 625 milligram. And uh, the wound was completely, you see, having uh, necrosed and having the bad smells at the time. So that the patient uh, has been admitted in our indoor uh, hospital. And this uh, antibiotic and parental painkillers injections, which, was which she was receiving around the close, has been stopped. And uh, uh, this patient. Uh, uh, was kept on unani medications orally besides some regimental therapy because two things uh, started simultaneously one is unani medication and the leech therapy and herbal dressing done on almost daily basis at the time of admission the patient uh, you see that uh, her, her parameters were taken here you can see her uh, hemoglobin was on the seven and the counts was around 10,000 and uh, she, she was having uncontrolled sugar uh, and uh, this uh, platelets counts was around uh, were around uh, 6 lakhs 
the side other things also and uh, uh, patient was kept on daily dressing and uh, she was applied uh, and uh, you see that uh, the leeches were applied over her foot here you can see there are uh, three woods which is which are now under the healing stage because you can see in the earlier picture uh, the uh, condition of the wounds uh, is like that one is near the toe in the middle and the another one is near the heel here you can see the wounds are under the healing stage and this picture taken after three weeks here you can see that the salap has gone off the patient became free from pain you see in the first week of the treatment she came back from the parenteral painkiller injection and patient was kept on oral painkiller tablets because at that time we can't do anything so that gradually we have reduced the medications whatever she is taking except antibiotic which was which were discontinued immediately so that by the end of third week every type of pinnacle has been taken off and here you can see that by the end of third week the salaf has also gone off and patient became free of pain as i told you just now and also bad smell has also reduced substantially and the parameter which were taken out after the completion of one here you can see her hemoglobin became increased it has become now 8.1 and the platelets has come down from 6 lakhs to 4.96 lakhs means around 5 lakhs and uh, the counts uh, her counts is uh, around 12000 now uh, uh, this is uh, you see the picture which was taken after 6 weeks uh, here you can see the wound uh, which uh, was uh, over the toe became healed completely and the wound which was near the heel has also in the almost in the healing stage and only one superficial wound is there and which also seems quite healthy and under healing process and this is the time when the bad smell has also gone off and this picture taken after nine weeks and now wound almost became healed and uh, you see that uh, another picture taken after the uh, this is these are the investigation which has been done after the, the completion of three months here you can see hemoglobin became raised and her counts has come down which is, is now around 6000 and uh, you see her platelets has also come in, up to, into a normal uh, this thing uh, counts it, it is around 2.69 lakhs right now from the uh, 6 lakhs and now this picture taken after the completion of 12 weeks and here you can see the wound is completely healed now this is the patient which has been advised to go for amputation and such type of patient by getting treatment by taking advantage of alternative therapy by taking advantage of vena therapy now the wound is completely healed and patient, patient became on food here you can see the patient is, is standing in between and the paper published international wound journals and patient discharge after completion of three and half months now this is another case of uh, this uh, such type of wound the patient was having non-healing ulcer over left knee and this ulcer was continued since more than eight months and patient again kept on with any medication beside the local dressing and leash therapy and the another picture taken after the completion of three weeks now here you can see the wound become dried and under healing process uh, there is another case of you can see the patient was advised to go for amputation and put for treatment but just after three days patient have a massive heart attack and died so that i was not able to treat him further and there is another case you see a 41 years old gentleman and the patient was having non-healing venous ulcer and this ulcer was continued from two years so that again patient was kept on this yunani medications local dressing daily basis and leech therapy and this picture was uh, taken after completion of two weeks and here you can uh, go through this uh, slide that uh, 
his wound what was with the new water only no antiseptic no bitter nothing else and uh, daily dressing herbal dressing then almost daily basis and uh, this picture shows signs of healing in this also you see after completion of two weeks the another picture was taken after completion of one two days at that time when the patient became discharged here the wound became completely healed only hypopigmentation you can see in this but there is no wound at all and patient discharged after completion of 28th day uh, we do have another patient uh, this uh, lady she was diabetic and at the verge of amputation because she was having this wound since last two years and this wound is extended to the soul also here you can see the soul is on soul is also involved and uh, it, 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 the, wound, uh, the patient was kept for uh, you see that uh, sometimes she may go for amputation uh, this patient also admitted and uh, put on any medication some local dressings and release therapy also and uh, this picture was taken after completion of three weeks here you can see there is no swelling only one wound seen there uh, along with a small surf which has reduced substantially and uh, there is no swelling now uh, the, this is the uh, you see the, the, the picture of the same patient on the soul side uh, taking at the same time after completion of three weeks and now this has also shown sign of healing you see the picture of the same patient was taken after completion of six weeks this wound is under healing process uh, became very small in size and uh, this is the sole side plantar side of the same patient and was wound is under healing process also uh, uh, this picture was taken after completion of nine weeks and this picture was taken after completion of nine weeks further here you can see that wound which you have seen just now is under healing a process now you you may compare from that also and uh, yeah and uh, this this patient discharged after a uh, three months of treatment here you can see there is no wound on that side so it became reduced though it is not clear but we don't the photograph further we, we do not have a good photograph right now here you can see there is no wound at the same time this picture has taken after the completion of three three months and patient became on food there is no one and saved from amputation there is uh, another case in uh, this gentleman having a non healing ulcer in right foot uh, and this ulcer was continued since uh, more than five months and he asked he may go for amputation anytime so that by fearing of amputation patient landed two pupils and he admitted kept on oral unani medication beside leash therapy and daily dressing and this wound again also was with rain water on daily basis and herbal dressing was done and as and when required the right treatment was also done this picture was taken after completion of one week here you can the sign of healing because there is a lot of difference in between this picture in between these two pictures this one and this one and now this picture was taken after completion of one month. A wound seam is uh, under healing process in this picture. And the another picture was taken after one and a half month. And this the wound have shown for the sign of improvement. One thing I want to tell you in, in this case, the patient uh, was laying on only one foot because of the wound. So that muscular, muscular atrophy has also taken place but uh, as soon as the wound we can head uh, we encourage the patient to move with both the lips here you can see the wound become completely healed and patient left his lucky uh, or crutches which he was taking now and now patient is completely healthy and on both foot and saved from uh, amputations uh, here is you can see there is another case of threatening gangrene uh, which is increasing size again patient uh, go at the watch of amputation because of that and uh, you see that patient uh, kept on the same treatment at this picture taken after completion of 12 uh, sorry two weeks 
here you can see the sign of healthiness in this wound and uh, here you can see this picture taken after completion of four weeks for the sign of improvement seen in this picture and uh, this picture taken after completion of six weeks here you can see no wound seen there uh, the wound is completely healed over the heel and here you can see the clear, clear, clear picture now patient is free from any a wound for any ulcers right now so we do have uh, many cases uh, but uh, i think that is it, it is enough uh, for uh, uh, to know that these are the medicines which have some you see strength in uh, combating the problem, com uh, such type of problem where the patient may lose his or her limbs so that the medicine are perfectly well. So that the promotion of the system is very important and we have to uh, look for new avenues to uh, combat uh, such type of situation. I think I was stopped by this uh, uh, lecture here. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you are most welcome. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Professor Arif. That was a nice presentation. Yes, uh, I had uh, gone through these type of uh, cases in personal too. Uh, I understand uh, the presentation is very important for people who are actually suffering from these kind of uh, problems. And yes, uh, if there are any questions, you can just uh, post over in the comment session or also you can uh, uh, raise your hand so that I'll make uh, available for the speech with the uh, speaker. I find uh, no more no questions for the presentation, Professor Arif. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, you can just withdraw your uh, presentation thing. So we'll continue with the next oral presentations for the track. Okay, thank you. Very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, now we are moving on to the next session of this particular track that is oral or poster presentations. And before, before we move on to the presentations part, I would like to convey the times for the presentations. For people who will be presenting oral presentations, uh, they will be provided with uh, eight to 10 minutes of the time, including a questionnaire. And uh, people who are presenting the poster will be provided with uh, three to five minutes of the time, including questionnaire. I repeat, for oral presentation, it is 8 to 10 minutes, including questionnaire. And for poster presentation, it is uh, 3 to 5 minutes, including questionnaire. And uh, the first presenter of this day will be Savita Sharma. And uh, yes, I will invite Savita Sharma to the stage. Yes, uh, you can be a bit loud. Uh, okay, sir. How to present the screen? How to present the screen? You have an option uh, below your uh, uh, presentation. That is a square, video, audio, and then a square. A square type of icon is there with arrow mark in it. The icon be after the mic. Yes, yes. Uh, we can see your uh, screen. Uh, now my PC is That is in desktop. Sir. Yeah, you can open your uh, desktop. Whatever the presentation you want to. Yes. We can see your presentation. Yes, yes. You can go ahead. Thank you, sir. Now, Thank I can say the assistant professor in CGC London. My topic is application of newer technologies in development of dosage form of phytoconstruents. Basically, what are phytoconstruents? We all are aware they are the compounds which are produced by plants and which are found in the fruit. Polyphenols are the beneficial plant compounds, and these phytochemical phytoconstruents are used in various diseases like PBS, cancer, and diabetes. I mainly focus on the diabetes. Everybody is familiar with the diabetes and the cause of the diabetes. That is, the, it is a metabolic disease which is characterized by the uh, disorder of a metabolic disease, which, uh, 
which is characterized by the disorder of the metabolism of glucose. Basically, that is due to the insulin, and healthy insulin will control the entry of the glucose into the cells. But uh, in pancreas, that is release the beta cells of the pancreas, which release the insulin, and in, uh, there is failure for the activity of the insulin. And in type two, there will be the no insulin receptors. And generally, there will be the type two diabetes mellitus in which we give the drug anti-diabetic drug. Now, role of the phytoconstituents in diabetes. Basically, herbal anti-diabetics having the good antioxidant activity, which will be effective for its management. Like garlic oil, cinnamon, aloe vera, fenugreek. These all are very good and having the anti-diabetic. properties to improve the insulin as well as glucose tolerance and these polyherbal formulations having no reported or no significant side effect as compared to the metformin as we know that metformin causing the lactic acidosis that is a major side effect now the curcumin and quercetin also the various formulations of curcumin and quercetin are known for the diabetes And uh, curcumin is the uh, latest and uh, very renowned for doing the work. It's difficult with curcumin, but it's good in it's having the medicinal properties so much like antioxidant, wound healing, anti-cancer, anti-diabetic. Quercetin is also that is found in onions, broccoli, citrus fruits, and it is used as antioxidant, anti-cancer, anti-diabetic. Now the major issue. For the phytoconstituents and the herbals having mainly the problems with the BCS class two and class four drugs, they having the problems of solubility in biodiesel. Now, uh, as a scientific people, we all are aware of these technologies like microization, nanoparticles, nano suspension, solid dispersion, complexation, liposome. These are all techniques which are familiar to the scientific people. Having the Technology like and in the stability problems and the nano particles they require the sophisticated machinery. Now I work on sustainability and I want to give the day my main motive is that that is the next policy and solution. It is what I call the. and improve the distribution rate of the class two drugs the poorly soluble drugs dissolve and disperse in a significant non volatile solvent and they will lose the carrier and coating material into free flowing powder but this technique is carefully selected on the basis of the property of the drug ingredient and dosage form Now this is the mechanism behind this. This is the liquid in which the drug will be incorporated. The drug which is poorly water soluble, and then they enclose the carrier particles. There will be the saturated layer of the carrier, and then a liquid layer will be formed on the particle surface. As we add the coating material, the powder will be a free flowing. The main uh, point Dr. is that Shavita, the solubility. Uh, Dr. Shavita, your uh, presentation sharing has been stopped. Please again uh, start your sharing. just click on the same icon so that you are uh, uh. uh, now now it's no it is no no i cannot see your presentation um i click on this search and Screen share. Yes. Now, now, now you click onto the uh, button. Is it visible, sir? No, I'm sorry, it's not visible. You click on uh, uh, that uh, same icon, square shape icon. Yes, yes. Now I can see. Now I can see. Okay. Yes, yes. Please. Go. Technology 
कि दे ऑल नो अवर वर्क इज नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी नैनो पार्टिकल लाइफोजोम दिस टेक्नोलॉजी हैविंग द ट्वेंटी फोर लैक रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस एंड दे हैव द पोअरली वॉटर सॉल्वर लाइक कार्बोमेट्रिपेन एंड वेरियस ड्रग्स और एनजीपिन लोफिरामाइड हेयर इज द लिक्विड ड्रग्स the drug will be soluble in the non volatile maximum then there will be the maximum solubility of the drug in the non volatile solvent then less amount of the carrier and the coating material will be shown and there will be like a spironization occur and this is the very uh, benefit to the bcs class and bcs class 4 drugs as the addition of the coating material converts the wet to dry surface and then this powder this liquid solid powder can be compressed into a tablets and can be capsulated in the cap uh, powder that will be encapsulated in the capsule now this need of the liquid solid system that is for the poorly soluble insoluble liquid drugs loading factor the liquid which will retain the powder maximum quantity of the material that which will be retained in the uh, liquid that non volatile solvent that is lf is equal to w by q w is the weight of the non volatile solvent and which will it will release the drug release it will basically enhance the solubility the it will overcome the solubility and viability issues it is a I guess there is a technical glitch from Shavita Sharma's uh, end. Uh, that is the reason why her voice is being uh, chopped, and even uh, her she got disconnected. So we'll move move ahead uh, with the next presentation of the day because the time is also up for her. And uh, today's next uh, presentation will be from uh, Jaimit Kaur. i wish jaimit kaur is present here and uh, you can just come on to the stage hello am i audible yes i e or audible sir you see yes i can see your presentation now you can go ahead okay so today topic is identification of fast evolving effector coding genes in the paxina triticina so as you know that wheat is a most prominent staple food crop occupying near about uh, 17% of the crop acreage globally and it feeds near about 40% of the world population and twice 20% of the food calories to the human nutrition and according to uh, united nation forecast the world population would be exceed near about uh, 32% in the next 40 years so to reach approximately uh, 9.1 billion in the next uh, year uh, in the year 2050 so if the demand growth have to be remain persistent the global world uh, wheat consumption would have to be surplus near about 880 million metric tons by 2050 so according to the world wheat production of Uh, 2019 and 2020 it will be 765.4 uh, 0.41 million metric tons according to the international grain council so main uh, more prevalent occurrence of uh, uh, 
variety more prevalent occurring regularly in on wheat other than other cereal crop and due to its alteration to divergent climate conditions and omnipresent occurrence the frost results in greater total annual loss than other uh, rust disease like the stem or the uh, striped rust disease so under the severe epidemic conditions uh, poxenia tripicina can flag weak loss near about 70 10 to uh, 70 percent so uh, uh, rust pathogens are mainly of three main types uh, and the wheat is the main host of the these rust pathogens first is the poxenia tripicina that uh, main causal agent is leaf rust poxenia uh -huh. graminis that is also a causal agent of stem rust and the poxenia striformis that is a causal agent of the striped rust so my my main focus is on poxenia triticina that is a leaf rust that mostly affect the on the wheat crop so leaf rust is a uh, leaf rust was first recognized in 1780 and it is also known as Uh, brown rust that is uh, and is is solvable uh, significant disease economically on the cereal rust disease worldwide and it emerged in the month of feb to march when the wheat is in anthesis or the grain formation stage so it wheat leaf rust mainly cause loss of yield rows on the wheat in the month of feb to march so major threat of this fungal disease is it is a fungal pathogen that is has to be est estimated to cause annual crop yield loss to 15 to 20% and it is a major threat to the food security and fungal pathogens may have the aptness to cause destructive plant disease and as a major threat to the food global security so the main objective is uh, for to choosing this leaf rust is to identify the fast evolving factor genes in the poxenia tricina means the genes that are highly mutable so i have to identify that genes that are highly mutable so for this these are the methodologies i have selected first the data collection gene prediction and functional annotation identification of effector proteins in the poxenia then the identification of secretory proteins in the poxenia species homologous sequence identification among, among different poxenia species and their evolutionary selective pressure analysis so the data is collected from the genome sequence of a poxenia triticina striformis and the graminis were downloaded from the broad institute and then i have selected uh, 22 uh, genome sequences of the poxenia but main foc i have studied Uh, all the 24 sequ uh, genome sequences but the main focus is on the poxenia triticina that there is a comparative study between the other poxenia species related to poxenia triticina so 19 genome sequences belong to poxenia species were downloaded from the ncbi then uh, this is the detail of the genome data uh, that is downloaded from the broad institute downloaded the triticina striformis and others 19s are from the uh, ncbi and these are the strain names and the this is the assembly so the gene prediction and first uh, the gene prediction and annotation was done so gene prediction was uh, performed using de novo prediction tool method using fgenis it is a software so 19 poxenia genomes from poxenia uh, were used whereas poxenia is used as a model at mrna protein of uh, triticina striformins and graminis were already available from the broad institute so the other 19s that are downloaded from the ncbi their gene prediction is done using the fgenis software and the predictive proteins were searched against the nr database using diamond blast x for their functional annotation and the and then i have then the identification of the effector proteins effectors are the proteins expressed by the plant pathogens to aid uh, infection of the specific protein species and the effectors are the small cysteine rich proteins function through manipulation of the plant immune response so my main focus is on the effector proteins so uh, to find out the effectors i use the software effector p 
version 2.0 that is to you uh, predict the factor protein in the pacinia trichina and it is a python based software and along with this i utilize embos and the vika software for the prediction of the effectors for my further studies after that i go for a functional enclosure using blast to go and the gene ontology was performed and to do the further analysis of the predicted factors so after that uh, the functional enclosure i identify the secretory proteins in the pacinia species using signal p and the transmembrane helix signal p predicts the class, uh, classical secretory proteins in the eukaryotes and the transmembrane helix were predicted with thmm and the protective proteins were initially uh, analyzed by signal p predict the uh, first i do the uh, signal p uh, that is signal prediction after that i go for the transmembrane protein helixes so after that homolog sequences identification was done uh, between the different uh, pacinia species so homolog prediction was done using the uh, blast p and the pacinia triticina protein sequence uh, in this uh, pacinia triticina used as a query and other 21 uh, pacinia species were uh, they were search against the pacinia triticina that is the blast is uh, done between the uh, uh, pacinia triticina and the other 21 species and the uh, with the default e value is 1e that is e value mean the significance threshold of the expect expected value was 1e minus 5 were used and the evolution the main study is on the evolutionary study that is find out the uh, fast evolving factor genes so well evolutionary selection pressure analysis were done the, the protein sequences that were selected for homologs were then aligned with the cluster w that is a multiple alignment and the multiple alignment were converted into the mrna codon alignments the sequences that were aligned were then converted into the mrna coding alignment using rev trans and then the and to know the uh, uh, selection pressure we do the uh, k ks values were uh, calculated K K S means K means non-sanimals. Non-sanimals means it is a nucleotide mutation that alters the amino acid sequences of the proteins, and they results in the biological changes in the organisms. And other is a synonymous means K S is a some is called a, a silent mutation. So I calculate the K A K S values. and the values that are greater than 1 shows that it is a positive selection less than 1 means purification selection and close to 1 means neutral selection so my main focus is on positive selection that is greater than 1 so uh, after the case k k s value calculation i go for a site specific selection of each amino acid and then to find out the significant as uh, significant so it is done using the uh, likelihood value test using models ma m8a model ma means the positive selection model and ma8 means it does not allow the positive selection that is it is also known as the null model so likelihood scores of these models were calculated using log likelihood ratios with degree of freedom 1 so only sites with posterior probability less than 0.05 were selected so these sites are the first i calculated the uh, k k s values uh, after that the values which are greater than 1 were selected these are the positive sites and after selecting the positive sites out the significant sites that they are significant or not and values which are less than 0.05 were the selected and these are the main highly significant positive sites so i will show you the results so the data is collected from the broad institute and the 19 uh, assemblies were 19 uh, assemblies were downloaded from the ncbi so it is a detail of the it shows that the assembly uh, strain names genome size of the different species n50 n50 and the 
geological location of the streams that i have selected so the gene prediction is done so it shows this table shows the gene prediction is done using the fgenis tool so the pretisina stiformis and graminis i already have the mrna and the protein so other strains i have done the gene prediction so this table shows the number of the predicted mrnas and the predicted proteins and the longest mrna smallest rna and the average length of the uh, mrnas so my main focus is on the pretisina this is a comparative study of the uh, species of paxinia pretisina with other species so now the main work is on the finding the factors so a factor prediction is done using the factor p so uh, paxinia triticina shows 15663 genes paxinia triticina has main 15663 genes so i run the factor p and i got only 2571 of factors and 13000 are the non factors so we got only the 2571 means 2571 are the factors so with these factors i further go for the study of for the evolutionary study of the mutation genes so in these i got the 166 domains in the in 2571 factors i got 161 domains and these are the information of the domains using the uh, uh, pfm scan i identify the domains and then the secretory protein uh, prediction was used using the signal p so out of 2571 factor proteins i got only the uh, 459 uh, total signal p uh, so it shows near about 17.8% are the signal p secretory proteins i got from the total factors and the transmembrane i got only 277 transmembrane helixes were found and most mostly are in the uh, transmembrane helix one region that is it is near about 166 are in the helix one region and the others so uh, further i go for the functional annotation using blast to go and uh, it shows that uh, 2567 are the blasted are blast sequences and the annotation were done between the uh, uh, 1232 and the on map were 1524 so i got out of 2567 i got um, near about 1232 are the annotated sequences so these are the graphs of the annotation so it is the biological process cellular component and the molecular function so main focus is on the biological process and this graph shows that the mostly region is in the cellular process and the metabolic processes then the other part pie chart shows the most of the part in the cellular process and the metabolic process. so my main focus is on the biological processes of this uh, gene ontology so i have done the homologous sequence alignment uh, homologous sequence alignment with the other species so um, we have 25 uh, 2571 factors and when we uh, compare with the blast with blast p with the other species these are the detect the number of detected homologs with the other 21 strains of the paxinia species so evolution so the main part is on the evolutionary selection pressure analysis so we compared the k k as well means non synonymous to synonymous ratio of the 2571 factor proteins and we got only the 1408 unique protein coding region out of 2571 we got only the 1408 unique protein coding regions in the factor proteins and only 489 genes were under positive selections that is they were greater than 1 so this graph shows that 1 means it uh, it is a orange color bar shows that these are the positive selection and sec these are the uh, neutral and these are the purifying selection area of the factors genes that i have found out so uh, for next is the significant signs so uh, significant signs are used using the 
log likelihood values and the uh, ma m8 model so m8 means a positive model and m8 means null model and these are the p values that is uh, we have calculated is less than 0.05 and the k ks values uh, and the one means the uh, genes that shows less than one values and these are the positive uh, putative size and the, and these are the positions of the uh, uh, sites that is uh, present and we identified only 75 genes that exhibit scientifically significant uh, sites out of 489 positive selections so it shows that only 79 are the truly significant positive sites of these uh, effector proteins in the paxina triticina that these are the uh, 79 genes are the fast evolving genes in the Paxina triticina that are they are highly mutable. So conclusion is that we have presented a computational pipeline for identifying the uh, factors under positive selection in Paxina triticina and we have predicted 257 factors with 165 domains and 459 secretory proteins and the gene ontology was identified for the Paxina triticina and we identify the non synonymous to synonymous ratio to evaluate the gene divergence and we identified of 489 genes and only 75 genes that are uh, highly significant using likelihood ratio tests so our diversification selection can be applied to the wide range of pathogens for which divergent data is available and can be insight on the evolutionary process between the host and the pathogens and our work indicates the element of the protein linked to pathogen C evolutionary dynamics possibly in the mechanism related to pathogen specification. Therefore, the factor candidates in plant pathogens that show signs of fast evolutions are promising target for disease control in the plant. So, uh, this result provides valuable insight for the fast evolving factor genes for the further study. Thank you, Jamit Kaur, for the presentation. And uh, please uh, stop your sharing so that I can uh, pass the presentation to our uh, next okay. member. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, the next presentation would be by Anu Sharma. Anu Sharma, uh, please come on to the backstage. I'm sending you the invitation. Hinu Sharma. After Hinu Sharma, the next presentation will be uh, by Dr. Om Prakash Sahu. Hinu Sharma, can you uh, please come on to the backstage? I would like to repeat the uh, conditions again for the oral and poster presentations. For oral presentation, that is 8 to 10 minutes is the time slot provided, including questionnaire. And for poster, it would be 3 to 5 minutes, uh, including questionnaire. I'm sorry, I cannot uh, see any response from Hinu Sharma either. I would like to proceed with uh, Om Prakash, uh, Dr. Om Prakash Sahu. So, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Myself, Dr. Om Prakash, uh, working as a professor in the uh, Department of Chemical Engineering, Chandigarh University. So uh, thank you uh, very much for giving me opportunity to present my work in uh, your respective international conference or recent trend in life science. Uh, okay. So uh, the discussion title is Extraction of Essential Oil from Indus Ripus Globus for the Manufacturing of medi uh, Medicated Soap. Now the content of my work is uh, introduction to the toxic, uh, oh, sorry, this was uh, heavy metals I will mention. Methodology is there, result discussion and references are there. So we know very well that uh, India is a rich country where we get the eucalyptus plant and uh, uh, there is a number of aromatic uh, applications are there. Among them eucalyptus tree is the most of the common available in all parts of uh, India. Essential oil is an aromatic volatile substance, okay, means it's a once we are going to be touched or if we open it, maybe it is going to be vaporized. By distillation or extraction, uh, broom, seed, fruit, all part of that plant is going to be used for uh, medical application. 
Essential oils are found to be hundred of the products, but generally used for the oil flavor and pharmaceutical ingredient. So what we find from the last decade uh, that the technology was upgraded. Now they are diversifying the application of this one. Previously they are going to use for some wound or uh, like uh, pain killer like that things. And ordinance they use for the perfume and other cosmetics. And nowadays they have been also introduced for the application of the cosmetics like face wash or uh, screen uh, care like that things. Now uh, as the flavoring they are present in a wide variety of food including the soft drink. Now they have been also introducing the uh, soft drinks like a product ice creams, candy, okay, and even for the meat and other uh, uh, food products. A pharmaceutical ingredient, uh, essential oils are used for the dental products such as toothpaste, okay, uh, allopathics and physiotherapy products and the large number of the medicines. So by this we can come to know that eucalyptus has a vast or the large applications are there that we have been used for our research purpose. Now, uh, what is the aim of this work? To the project, uh, the project research work has been carried out for the extraction of eucalyptus oil for the uh, tree leaf for the manufacturing of medicated soil or by the steam distillation oil extraction method. The soap produced by the neutralization and sponification methods, the soap efficiency determined as a measure of quality and soap will be better. The pH uh, test was revealed middle basic property there means it's uh, uh, comfortable means it's, uh, pH is around 6.9 around is there. The color of the foam and efficiency of the soap were improved with the addition of bleaching agent, repellent and foaming agent respectively. Now how we have been uh, performed this one or how we uh, 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 make this one. So generally we collect the uh, uh, leaves, eucalyptus leaf uh, from the uh, uh, garden side or from the uh, root side okay we first of all we uh, keep for the sun dry okay then uh, we keep in the oven uh, at uh, 30 degrees centigrade for five to six hours uh, at the uh, moderate temperature then uh, we grind it with the help of uh, magnetical equipment and we convert it into the powder form you find on the picture that how it looks it's a brownish color uh, powder is there then we have been sleeves at the 2 mm particle size. Now, at the next step of this is how we can extract the essential oil. For that, we have been used the succulent uh, distillation method. 30 grams of the prepared powder leaf has been mixed with the 300 ml of crystallized water and the succulent distillation method with the capacity of 1 liter. So, uh, capacity of this container is uh, around 1 liter. The apparatus have been equipped with the condenser to cool the vapors. Even the condensers has been applied to uh, get the maximum efficiency of that extract oil. The measured amount of branded solids and the solids are mixed in, in the soft slate beaker. The temperature maintained up to 140 degrees centigrade and run with experimentally till the extraction oil. So until uh, we run, uh, we can get the extract oil. Now the collected oil has been filtered and for the soap manufacturing. Now preparation of the soap is there, uh, how we have been performed this one. Sodium hydroxide, water and uh, oil at the different proportion has been mixed on the beaker. The content was heated and continuously mixed at the 70 degree. So we keep this uh, solution on the magnetic stirrer, okay, at the temperature of 70 degree and properly we have been mixed until they are disappeared. After that the process heating and heated uh, content with the mix of the sodium silicate hydrogen peroxide and glycerin. So these are the products after uh, mixing the, this solution in sodium silicate we got hydrogen peroxide was there and glycerin is there. So generally glycerin is uh, considered as a byproduct of soap manufacturing. All the contents were mixed continuously for 55 uh, minutes at the specific temperature means 70 degree have been decided. So by that temperature we have been mix with this one. Characterization, how we have been characterized the antibiotic or antimicrobial activities on the soap. The required quantity of buffer uh, peptones was both and the uh, plant count agar medium were prepared in this slice autoclaves at 121 degrees centigrade at 15 LPS pressure and 15 minutes. Okay. The performance of antibacterial activity on one gram of produced soap was has been dissolved completely in a 10 ml of tap water. So this was our testing methods. By that, we characterize the uh, uh, antimicrobial uh, property of the prepared soap. 
okay by this machine we have been count the actually colonies uh, uh, when uh, we check or uh, after foaming okay the series dilution method was performed by transferring 1 ml ml of the dilute soap water into 9 ml of the sterilized buffer prepped on both and first test tube was continuously performed up to 10 to the raised to the power minus 5 so this was our study when we we took the result of uh, solution or the combination of 1 ml and 9 ml so like that we have been perform our anti uh, bacterial property on the so now come to the result and discussion how we have been extract the oil so generally we have been optimize the time first of all uh, in the succinct uh, distillation how much time we are going to fake so what we did we, uh, we just uh, check the uh, uh, extract oil time to time the time we have been fixed from 30 minutes up to 150 minutes and what we observe that at the time of 150 minutes maximum uh, it was uh, uh, around 4.5 to 5 uh, mg per uh, uh, of the extract oil was extracted at the particle size of 2 mm slips okay now now the second uh, parameters we have been optimized temperature this is one of the important parameter for the extraction on oil because if more temperature is there the uh, the prepared solution is also going to be destroyed or if it is less temperature means we, we are not going to extract proper oil from that one so it is important to optimize the working temperature so we fix the temperature from 75 to 150 degree centigrade and what we observe that the extracting of oil was increases with respect to the temperature and at 120 degree centigrade temperature we found the maximum extract oil that is around uh, it's uh, around 6 mm okay from that now a third parameter we have been uh, 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 optimized that is solvent and solute so means whatever the uh, powder we have been to with respect to the solvent which we used to extract the oil that was uh, mentioned and uh, solute cell uh, ratio was from uh, optimized from 2 4 6 and 8 and what we observe that the ratio of uh, uh, between the solute and solute was 5 uh, raised to 1 like or uh, you can say like that around 5 give the good yield that was 5 ml of the extract oil this was our uh, uh, process to extract the maximum ex uh, essential oil from the eucalyptus powder now the same thing we have been tested for the anti uh, microbial uh, property on the soap which we have been prepared in the lab scale and what we observe that microbial growth with the different media commercial medicated soap solution produce the medicated soap solution and normally condition okay in all the condition it was 10 to the power minus 2 10 to the power 3 and up to it was 10 to the power minus 5 the bacterial growth without soap solution is very high so what we observe in in the solution which where we have been not added the this uh, essential oil we observed that the microbial growth was very high okay so uh, the growth bacteria soap solution is very low and counted colonies of the bacteria this we conclude that our product is effective for the anti uh, microbial uh, application the best condition to yield the eucalyptus soil by the water distillation is 120 degree centigrade at the particle size of 2 mm slips and the solid ratio was 4.5 uh, uh, volume by weight and raised to the 1 for 120 minutes product of the soap by the saponification of the vegetable oil has been studied in the batch reactor using the sodium hydroxide as a catalyst so for the soap preparation we have been used the vegetable oil generally which is available on the market so what what, what we uh, found that if we purchase the sodium hydroxide it is possible to prepare in our home application also or in home level we can also uh, prepare this one the variable chosen for the study was residence time concentration and reaction time okay reaction temperature the effect of this variable on the ph and formability were studied this was important specification settling reaction was 70 degree and the oil sodium ratio was 2 to, to, to the ratio 1 the formability of the soap increased with increase in time of 40 to uh, 55 means whatever the foam was developed on that soap was increases Uh, from uh, when we increase the time the formability and the ph are indicated to select the best binding of the given trial for the above discussion it may be concluded that the optimum operating condition study for the present work 
of NOH ratio was 2 to the 2 raised to 1, temperature 70 degree, and the reaction time 55. This is for the uh, for the soap preparation, but for the anti uh, uh, my, uh, microbial static, we have been uh, added with the different ratio of the extract oil, and we uh, check with the colonies developed on the sample. Now, microbial growth within the different uh, media, commercial medicated soap produced uh, medicated soap at the normal condition uh, without soap and contaminate solution. Also, we how we check this one means we we generally take some uh, different sample from different. And we got this result. Now, conclusion is that the to manufacturing high qualified and acceptable medicated soap in the whole part of the world is well in our country with the minimum amount of initial financial investment is in the hand of person. So the thing is that it's a very basic requirements and uh, with the uh, fundamental concept, we can also make uh, or we can develop up to scale level. Yeah, or with the small uh, financial assistant and it is possible to prepare in the small scale also the selection of the raw material is the first criteria like vegetable oil and UK industry moreover our results are primarily contribute to the establishment of standard values and chemical profile of the physical parameter for the industry industry so whatever the result we have been achieved that fulfilled the uh, the demand or the uh, acceptable norms of the uh, medical authorities okay so it uh, uh, <coughs> gives the better idea now uh, now thank you very much for this opportunity and if you have any question let me know i am going to clarify you uh, thank, uh, thanks a lot uh, dr om prakash sahu for your presentation uh, that is uh, very clear and uh, yes uh, if there are any questions you can just uh, pose questions to uh, the speaker or or else I will uh, get go forward with the next presentation. Uh, Dr. Om Prakash, who please uh, stop your sharing so that I can uh, pass the sharing option to the next. Okay. Yes. I see. Yes. I see no questions uh, being asked. Uh, hence, uh, we'll uh, proceed with the next presentation. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Thanks a lot. The next presentation, I would like to convey this to Mr. Uh, Mudasir Meer. Mudasir Meer, you can just come on to the backstage and uh, you can present your presentation. I guess Mr. Mudasir uh, is not ready with his presentation yet. So with these presentations, uh, the presentation session for this particular uh, day is been completed. And uh, I would like to uh, inform you all that this particular uh, international virtual conference on uh, recent trends in uh, life sciences is being conducted by Enleven Archive on behalf of the journal, Journal of Natural Products and Traditional Medicine. We are inviting uh, uh, editorial board members and also uh, authors for the upcoming issues of the journal. And uh, after completing these sessions and uh, conference, we'll send you the invitations uh, and you can be a part of the journal. And uh, yes, we will take a break for the day and uh, we will be back with the next sessions by three o'clock, three o'clock in the noon. And the next session will be uh, from by Dr. Huang Weiling, who is uh, from Brazil. And uh, she will be handling the topics of chakra healing and also occupation and acupressure in traditional medicine. And I wish everyone to come back to the sessions by three o'clock in the noon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We are taking a break now and we'll be back okay. by 3 p.m. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good noon, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, the co virtual conference that is international uh, virtual conference on recent trends in life sciences day one we have successfully completed uh, first half of the day one and we are entering into the second half of the day day one and we are here having uh, our beloved speaker dr huang Weiling for upcoming uh, session which is going to be on chakra healing and acupuncture and acupressure under the track uh, traditional medicine 
before we get into the topic of chakra healing and acupuncture and acupressure i would like to have a brief introduction of dr huang weiling dr huang weiling who was born in taiwan raised and graduated in medicine in brazil specialist in infectious and parasitic diseases general practitioner and parenteral and enteral medical nutrition therapist once in charge of the hospital infection control service of the city of franca's general hospital she was responsible for the control of all prescribed antimicrobial medication and received an award for the best paper presented at the brazilian hospital infection control congress in 1998 since 1997 she works with the approach and treatment of all chronic diseases in a holistic way with treatment guided through te uh, teachings of traditional chinese medicine and hippocrates uh, she will be present and and the other topic would be the importance of the treatment of energy imbalances and chakras energy replenishment for prevention and treatment of cancer before we get into the session i request all the participants uh, uh, to be on be on track and uh, yeah if there are any questions and if you want to interact with dr huang weiling you can make use of a uh, raise hand option where i'll uh, uh, make uh, you to interact with uh, dr huang weiling and uh, this particular uh, conference is being conducted on behalf of enliven archive journal of natural products and traditional medicine and uh, the journal is inviting uh, editorial board members and uh, papers submissions for its upcoming issues thank you and uh, i would like to hand over the session to dr huang weiling dr huang you can go ahead with the session hi good morning to everyone good morning good afternoon good evening to everyone i would like to thank kumar and the uh, our living archives for inviting me to this conference today to share two studies Uh, my name is Juan Weiling. I'm a medical doctor from Brazil. My, uh, my presentation, my first presentation today is entitled The Importance of Treating Energy Imbalances and Chakras Replenishment for Prevention and Treatment of Cancer. Uh, analyzing the studies we have in the literature, uh this study aims to give only a supportive treatment when using acupuncture or chakra treatment for this kind of patients who are undergoing cancer treatment using chemotherapy and or radiotherapy all of them aim to control nausea vomiting depression and loss of appetite etc but this presentation i give you today is a different from what we have in literature for i will approach the pathology of cancer from the energy point of view not to treating only the symptoms as the cancer itself but the patient as a whole observing the influence of the energy imbalances on the cancer development for you to understand a little better the way of thinking proposed on this study and the other studies of my I'd like to start by describing the case that originate the theory that guides the proposition of the diagnosis and treatment this is a case i treat myself in 2006 and let's start the patient in question had leg pain in both legs when the first reached to me for the pain would not go away with the use of anti-inflammatory medications and the patient also informed me to feel cold in the lower limbs Uh, uh according to traditional chinese medicine the patient was diagnosed with kidney yang deficiency and the first i performed the physical examination and questionnaire to diagnose his energy deficiencies and to treat this energy imbalance i start to use the chinese dietary counseling uh, 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 orientating him to avoid uh, Uh, raw food, dairy products, cold water and sweets, and also coffee, soda, and matcha tea. 
And also I did the apex bladelatin. That is one of the procedures to take out the heat retention that is common in patients with energy deficiencies and pain conditions. And the patient was normally treated with the described procedure and recovered from the pain in the legs. And 10 acupuncture sessions later, he returned to for re-evaluation and told me he also had great improvement of his glaucoma condition. I was not aware the patient had glaucoma when I treated him. And the patient was performing the conventional treatment with the eye drops for more than 40 years with only little success. However, his, ophthalmolo his ophthalmologist confirmed that his intraocular pressure suffered a reduction from 40 to 17 after he was treated with Chinese dietary counseling, auricular and systemic acupuncture and apex ear blood selecting. I was much impressed with this result and such to study as a research at the Brazil Best Medical College, the Sao Paulo University in the ophthalmology department on the glaucoma session, exploring and demonstrating the effects of the acupuncture in glaucoma patients. Um, based on this observation, this study was presented for the first time in 2007 at the American Congress of Acupuncture in Baltimore, in the United States. And in 2015, it was represented again with another uh, study entitled Acupuncture Viewed Holistically Can Treat All the Symptoms and Disease at the Same Time at the Acupuncture Research Conference at the Harvard Medical School. In this presentation, I emphasize the need to treat the patient holistically, treating the yin and qi and blood energies. And by rebalancing these energies, we are able to treat all the patient's physical and emotional symptoms in different pathologies at the same time. And today's presentation, I will explore this reasoning in cancer patients. To better explain my reasoning, I always like to use the metaphor of the tree. I use this metaphor to make a comparison of Western medicine from ancient medicine, such as traditional Chinese medicine. On this slide, you can see the this tree has a root trunk and several branches, and coming out of each branch, you, you can see many leaves, and in this representation, each medical specialty is represented by each branch and the leaves of each branch represent the symptoms and disease related to each specialty. Now I begin to describe the three patients case report. This is the first case in November, 2018. The patient named MMGG, a 70-year-old male uh, woman, did a routine the gynecological exam and the doctor requested a thyroid exam. And on the result, it was found that the patient had the three malignant tumors on the thyroid. The biggest one was 14. And the patient was submitted to a biopsy, which confirmed the diagnosis of malignancy. She was then taken to another specialist on disease on head and neck, which requests an urgent surgery to take off all the thyroid and do iodotherapy and chemotherapy afterwards. And she started treatment with levothyroxine. Stressed out by her recent diagnosis, the patient sought my clinic again after a long time. I had previously done acupuncture treatment on her. And she also had diabetes, hypertension, diabetic retinopathy. And when she came back, I diagnosed her according to TCM with indeficiency and heat retention. And based on TCM reasoning, I orientate her to take out of her diet all dairy products, avoid cold liquids, raw food, and sweets, 
because these foods could induce a spleen and pancreas deficiency that is responsible for the absorption of nutrients and can uh, induce the retention of phlegm that is important to the, to induce the formation of tumors and also avoid fried foods, egg, chocolate, honey, and also coconut um, uh, alcoholic beverages because all these foods can induce the formation of more internal heat that one of energy imbalances that is leading to the formation of cancer. And also avoid the coffee, soda, mati tea, because all this drink could induce the imbalance in the kidney energy meridian responsible for the yin yang, yang energy formation. And also she did a uh, regular acupuncture and also she did the radiesthesia procedure that showed that uh, her chakras energy were in the lowest level of energy. And this kind of pattern in the chakras energy is very common in all the patients with cancer and also in patients with diabetes because this patient had diabetes too. And she, uh, I began to treat her with homeopathy medications and crystal-based medication and do systemic acupuncture and neuricular acupuncture. And the homeopathy medication was following uh, the the theory that I created entitled Constitutional Homeopathy of the Five Elements based on traditional Chinese medicine. It was, the, it was a theory that I created in 2015, but I was only pu published it in 2020 last year that I, I am using homeopathy medications using traditional Chinese medicine reasoning. And in TCM reasoning, we have the five elements theory and the yin and yang theory. And in this uh, new theory in homeopathy, I am treating all the five elements because all five elements are responsible for the manifestation of all kinds of the disease. And uh, if I treat the five elements, I can treat the about all kinds of the disease at the same time. Uh, for example, if uh, the patient has the deficiency in the first chakra, that is the wood element and it represents the liver, I can use phosphorus. The second chakra, I use, uh, when the kidney is without energy, I use in muriaticum. The third the chakra is the heart, I can use sulfur. The fourth chakra is the lung, I can use silicia. And the fifth chakra is spleen, I can use calcara carbonic. Here are the crystal-based medication that I usually use too in this kind of patients. And the result of this uh, case study is that she showed a reduction of 14, 14 centimeters to 4.5 centimeters in one tumors. And the other two, two tumors, one had disappeared completely. And after the discovery, the patient did not need to do any chemotherapy or iodotherapy, but she underwent to surgery after two or three months of treatment. And during this surgery, he, her surgeon uh, sent um, biopsy to do the biopsy and show that the malignancy appear and the tumor be, uh, turned benign. And the thyroid of the patient that need to be completed, remove it at first was now normally functioning, not needing to be taken out surgically. Only using this kind of rebalancing and recharging the chakra's energy. And the case study two is a 38-year-old female patient who showed the typical uh, cellular results in Papis Merizem. And uh, he, her TCM diagnosis was in uh, blood deficiency and heat retention had uh, the five uh, alterations in the uh, energies. And what uh, I did, the, the Chinese dietary council is the same as in the first case, acupuncture and auricular acupuncture with apex blood letting. And also I, we did the chakras energy uh, measurement that showed that this patient was 
uh, with no energy in the chakras energy centers too. And what we did was acupuncture, regular acupuncture, apex blood, Latin Chinese dietary counseling, and the use of the homeopathy medications according to the theory constitutional homeopathy of the five elements based on traditional Chinese medicine. And what we found in the result of this patient was that her, her alteration in the in the cervical exam and disappear completely after one month of this treatment. And the third case report is a 42 years old male patient. He was treating lung cancer and being medicated with chemotherapy. And he did the radiotherapy too. And he did also the neurosurgery because he had metastasis in the brain and other parts of the body. Be, being even able to touch externally a metastatic tumor on his abdominal wall and several cervical ganglions. And in the Western medicine course of treatment, they, he did, uh, they did the neurosurgery in this patient to remove the brain tumor and the patient's oncologist continued with chemotherapy process which was not reducing the metastatic tumor. Uh, in fact, it was reducing, but the metastatic tumor appears in many other sites of the body when using this kind of treatment only. And when, uh, one day he went to my clinic uh, because he was having dyspnea symptoms and uh, uh, very weakness. And I did the chakras energy measurement and all his five massive organs were in the lowest level of energy. And I did the same treatment as in the other patients, like uh, Chinese dietary counseling, avoid the dairy products, cold water, raw food and, and sweets. And also the, all that food to avoid coffee, soda and mati tea and fried foods, egg, chocolate, honey, coconut, alcoholic beverages. I did moxibustion is one of the tools in traditional Chinese medicine to replenish the energy and to fortify and to improve the patient's uh, weakness and fatigue symptoms. And also I use homeopathy medications to treat the lack of energy in the chakras energy centers. But the homeopathy is not in globulus, but is uh, taking uh, in the single dose um, for uh, to treat in, in each, each, each organ. And after TCM prescribed treatment, this patient had an incredible improvement in his dyspnea, and that was a disappearance of all metastasis and also the lung tumor itself. And with the improvement in his health, he paid, this patient was also an overall improvement, both physically and psychologically, and even though he was still undergoing certain chemotherapy treat, treatments. And uh, in this presentation, I'm showing you the difference between Western and traditional Chinese medicine uh, uh, viewpoints. And Western medicine is treating in this three metaphor in the leaf level. They treat cancer only at the tumor site. But what we are treating today are the energy imbalances located in the root of this tree that are usually not seen by the naked eye are under the earth. And what TCM looks in the uh, entire body of the human being and not in the symptoms, and they translate the symptoms into the energy imbalances and treating the energy imbalances and not just the symptoms. Here's so showing you the yin yang symbol. Yin and yang are energy forces that rule all the world. Everything in the universe is composed of yin and yang, including our human body. And the symmetrical arrangement of the dark yin and the light yang is not static, as we can see in the symbol. It's a rotational symmetry that suggests a continuous cyclic movement. 
Here is the relationship between yin and qi and blood. You can see that yin and yang depends on the qi and blood circulation. And if this blood or qi is in, uh, in the lowest level, um, the, the patient would not have health. And to, to have health, it's very important to achieve this uh, state of yin and yang, qi and blood. And if there are imbalances or deficiencies in one or a combination of these four energies, there is a formation of internal heat that can manifest as many uh, symptoms uh, on disease in emotional or physical, uh, such as anxiety, depression, panic syndrome, schizophrenia, uh, infectious process, hypertension, myocardial infarction, diabetes, and cancer formation, etc. Only uh, because of these energy imbalances can lead to all these manifestations. And um, here is to show you that comparing Western medicine to Chinese medicine, Chinese medicine considered the fruit, uh, root cause of the tumor regenesis, that is the decline of immunity due to energy deficiency, which all cases that presented today had in common the complete lack of energy in the chakras measured by radiesthesia. And here is to show you how I did the uh, questions to uh, uh, evaluate the deficiencies in energy of the patients. The first question, if the patient have daily bowel movement, it could mean blood deficiency. Young deficiency is when the patient have cold, uh, feels more cold, uh, mainly in the extremities. In deficiency is when the patient feels hot, mainly in the extremities. And chi deficiency is when the patient have excessive sweating during the day without doing any exercise. And heat retention means that the patient uh, has dry mouth or bleeding gums, bad breath, acne or redness in the skin, abdominal pain, micro or itching. And here are the five elements showing that each element represents one massive organ in traditional Chinese medicine. And here is to show you the correspondence between the chakras and the five elements in TCM. There are some studies. massive organs and uh, this is a, a very different procedure do the, that I begin to do because in China they do, do don't use this kind of measurement but they use the measurement of the pulse in the wrists to measure the energy of each element and here is to show you that the progression from health to disease are divided in five phases the uh, the phase four and five are the phase where Western medicine do the diagnosis because only in this phase there are alterations in the laboratory exams but the first three phases there is no alterations but the patient have energy imbalances and they have uh, complaints of the symptoms but the laboratory exams are normal. And when the laboratory exams are normal, this does not mean that the patient uh, is not sick. So the patient can or need the help and need treatment, but in the energy level. So in addition to all the guidelines made by Western medicine, this work shows that cancer is not the last stage of what can make patient return by removing the internal heat through apex ear blood letting and correcting the food to Chinese dietary counseling and keeping everything in balance and in addition to restoring the energy of the chakra through homeopathies according to constitutional theory of the five elements based on traditional Chinese medicine and crystal based medications. 
And here I'm showing you why I'm using homeopathy instead of high concentrated medications, because uh, uh, Arne Schultz's law, that was a law created in 1888, and this law created by two German researchers, they found that the use of high dilute medication improved organic process, and the use of high concentrated medication reduced the vital energy even more, that will harm the patient's uh, energy even more because as you I showed you, all the patients were in the lowest level in, of energy in the chakras energy centers. And if you maintain or use the high concentrated medication, the patient will worse even more the, his energy condition and will worsening his disease. And to show you the necessity of the having TCM and Western medicine in mind to treat cancer uh, patients and to have mind and spiritual body in the holistic approach. And here is the publication of this presentation. You can search at the internet. Uh, here's a quote from Hippocrates, foolish the doctor who despised the knowledge acquired by the ancients. That is why it's important to understand ancient medical theories to understand better what's happening inside the body. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, I will be very happy to answer you. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Huang? Yes. Yeah, that was a nice presentation. Uh, uh, we'll continue with the next presentation also? Yes. Yeah, once it is done, we'll go ahead with the questionnaire, if any. Can I begin my next presentation? Yes, yes, you can. Yes, okay. Can you see now? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, now I will begin my second presentation entitled Chakras Energy Deficiencies as the cause of dyspnea post coronavirus infection treatment. In this presentation, I will describe a case report of a patient who had COVID-19 infection and after the treatment began to complain dyspnea without doing any exercise. In this presentation, we will address some causes of dyspnea in Western medicine and after we explain what could be the cause of dyspnea in the energy point of view. Patients with uh, COVID-19 often have clinical characteristics such as chest tightness and dyspnea. And continuous and resolved dyspnea often indicates the progression of lung lesions and the mechanisms that underline the chest distress and dyspnea in patients with COVID-19 is still unclear. However, our clinical observations show that although some patients had significant chest distress and dyspnea, the lesions that were observed in the lungs during computed tomography were milder and not completely consistent with clinical symptoms. And we found that the extensive inflammation of the bilateral and respiratory bronchioles in patients with COVID-19 due to excessive activation of pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemotactic aggregation of t lymphocytes at the site of the inflammation are possible mechanisms underlying chest distress and dyspnea in patients with COVID-19. The primary target organs of SARS-CoV-2 in the human body is the lung. The primary representation of patients includes respiratory tract symptoms such as cough, fever, and dyspnea, and about 50% of patients with severe case of COVID-19 over the age of 60 years, lung or cardiovascular disease develop dyspnea one week after the onset of the disease, which can progress rapidly uh, to acute respiratory distress syndrome, difficulty to, co uh, to correct metabolic acidosis, coagulopathy, and even death. 
I would now like to talk about this study based on all my studies, which was based on all my previous presentation and the studies. And this case happened in 2006. That was the pain, uh, the patient in the pain, the legs and glaucoma that I want to repeat. And the, the, I started the, to be a research in the University of Sao Paulo and went to present at the Harvard Medical School. And now this is the first case report of this presentation. Is a 52-year-old woman. On September 4, 2020, she began to feel changes in her body, but nothing significant. And the night while participating in an online lecture, she dozed off. And when she woke up, she felt very tired, which made her fall asleep again quickly. The next day, since waking up, she felt a general malaise in her whole body, was sore, especially in the hip and leg muscles. During the night, the pain intensified, not allowing her to sleep. On September 6, the patient realized that beside the pain she was having, neither taste or smell she was having. And the other day, in addition to all these symptoms, she started to have a runny nose and sneezing, which led her to go on medical duty and have the PCR exam. And the doctor prescribed the fluimucil for seven days and the Bastel 10 milligrams initially for five days, but it was exterminated in another five days later. And the pains remained for about seven and eight days and running nose quickly subsided. And around six or seven days, she reported back pain on the right side, which led her to take the medication Ivermectin. And she remained in isolation for 14 days. And during this period, her symptoms decreased and she did not experience shortness of breath anymore. And after 17 days, the patient had medical clearance to return to work. And from the first day, she went back to he, um, he went, uh, she went back to work, and she began to feel tired throughout the afternoon, and becoming breathlessness when she spoke. And on the second day, when she returned home, she had shortness of breath that generated panic attack because. She was unable to breathe and had to work hard to recover from despair and to be able to breathe again. And this difficulty in breathing followed her all week, always in the afternoon, since she works with communication and needs to move between different sectors of the and she was all right, my patient due to hypertension, hypothyroidism, bruises and tinnitus. And her diagnosis according to TCM was kidney young deficiency, blood deficiency and indeficiency. And I measured her chakras energy centers two months prior to COVID-19 and was in this um, uh, state that all chakras energy were in the lowest level of energy meaning that all her internal massive organs in TCM were without any energy. And then we, I used the use of homeopathy medication to replenish the chakras energy centers using the theory constitutional homeopathy of the five elements based on traditional Chinese medicine. And the, all, and the result of this case, uh, the, uh, she... She recovered completely her dyspnea symptoms after three days beginning of the homeopathy medications and the crystal-based medications. Um, because she was using this kind of medication, but I prescribed a higher potency and to use uh, one single dose every day, one for each uh, chakra's energy, one for each five uh, the massive organs. And it was already um, oriented her to uh, avoid the dairy products, raw food, cold drinks, and sweets. But also the, um, to drink coffee, soda, and mati tea because these the drinks could imbalance the energy, uh, kidney energy. And also to avoid chocolate, fried food, coconut, alcoholic beverages. <clears throat> and also melted cheese, 
<coughs> to down to create more heat retention. And here are the auricular acupuncture points and the use of uh, apex and blood dilating to take out the heat and to rebalance the yin yang chi and blood energies. And the result was that she recovered her uh, shortness of breath using this kind of treatment. But uh, at uh, the end of this year, three months after, she didn't recover the, her sense of taste of smell. And this week after six months of the, the infection, she claimed that she it's not normal, her sense of taste of smell. And the case report two is a 56 year old woman on May 2020, she had COVID diagnosis by a serology contracted at her workplace in my city and her initial symptoms were pain the whole body and runny nose. And she searched for infectious disease, especially in my city that prescribed azithromycin and hydroxychloroquine. And she didn't have shortness of breath symptoms during the acute phase, but she began to, to have the shortness of symptoms after 15 days of the treatment. And in her past history, she started four years ago with burning taste in her mouth and uh, have um, obesity. And she did the, um, a surgery to reduce, uh, to reduce the obesity. And uh, but she uh, no doctor could explain why she was having the abdominal um, distension, and uh, she went so many doctors, and anyone could review her problems. And what I did was the chakras energy measurement that uh, showed that all her chakra were in the lowest level of energy meaning that the abdominal distension was due to the deficiency in this fifth chakra or the spleen pancreas deficiency and the, the and to to treat and the her dyspnea were due to the kidney energy deficiency that i will explain to you and the, this patient had the kidney in and yang deficiency, but yang deficiency is more than in deficiency in this case. And this she was having this kind of pattern of energy deficiencies. And she had yin and yang deficiency and qi and blood deficiency. And that is for making internal heat. This is the x-ray of this patient that was normal and the computer tomography. And the, the food orientation was according to Hippocrates, let food be your medicine and your medicine your, be your food. And here's to show you the tree metaphor that this pinea sentence is in the leaf level of the tree, but what we aim in this treatment was to treat the root level of this tree and aiming the treatment of all kinds of depression symptoms and disease in all specialties. Here is, I'm showing the same, I want to repeat. Here is the yin yang symbol and to achieve balance to have a healthy state. And in this patient, we have this yang deficiency, yang energy is less than yin. And here's the balance state between these four energies. And here is the relation between the emotional state and the uh, invasion of the external pathogenic factors generating the health or disease in the patients. And here is the five elements in the five element theory. Each element represents one massive organ in TCM such would represent the liver and responsible for vision, fire represent the heart, responsible for communication, uh, earth element represents the spleen, responsible for the sense of taste, and uh, the metal element represents the lung, representing uh, responsible for a, a sense of smell, and the water element is the um, 
representing the kidney responsible for hearing process. Here is just to show you that each element is responsible for one emotional manifestation. For example, fire responsible for joy. Excessive joy can harm the fire energy. The earth representing the worry. An excessive worry can imbalance the spleen. And the sadness can imbalance the metal, the excessive tear, the water element, or the kidney, and the anger, and the liver. And the here is to show you that the, there is the generation cycle. One element sends energy to the next element to transmit energy and the control cycle that one element can control the functioning of the other elements. And in this case of uh, dyspnea, what is happening is that when the lung sends energy to the kidney, when the kidney do not have energy to receive this transmission from the lung, this transmission cannot happen, is blocked, and the patient can feel the sense of dyspnea is that uh, like something is obstructed and the air cannot go uh, inside because the lung cannot send energy to the kidney. And in this situation, it's very common. In this situation, was caused by the use of high concentrated medication to treat <clears throat> the COVID-19 because as I show you, <clears throat> These patients had already low state in this chakra's energy, and when they use the high concentrated medication to treat the COVID-19, uh, they will harm even more the energy of the, the whole five massive organs, but in this case, in the kidney, uh, leading to the blockage in the transmission of the lung energy to the kidney. And that is why when the patient that has fear can imbalance even more the kidney energy leading to the empty state of the battery and the feeling of dyspnea symptoms in this patient. And in, in, in this case, I'm showing you that the fifth chakra is responsible for the absorption of nutrients and the formation of blood inside uh, and blood. And as I show you, each element is responsible for one massive organ in TCM. And here I'm showing you that one day this patient came to my clinic and was uh, complaining that she had the dyspnea symptoms. And I asked her what she ate at that day, and she said she ate tangerine and a piece of pure, pure, pure. and the, the, these two fruits have uh, a cold energy according to TCM and cold energy could reduce even more the young energy leading to the uh, uh, dyspnea manifestation. And that is why here I'm showing you why these two patients had dyspnea only in the afternoon because the kidney and bladder that are the organ that is uh, accumulated in the kidney meridian is the bladder. They, their, their energy is passing in the afternoon and that is why when the kidney energy is low or do not have energy, the flow of the energy from the lung to the kidney cannot happen and that is why the patient will have this pinea symptom during this period. And that is why here is one publication of mine entitled Treatment of Asthma Based on TCM and Homeopathy. Here I'm showing you that asthma is not related to the lung uh, organ, but is related to the kidney according to the five element theory. And the, here is, I'm showing you the necessity of using high diluted medication to replenish the chakras energy of these patients instead of the use of high concentrated medication in any level. <coughs> and every high concentrated can induce these kind of changes. In this research I did in my clinic, I'm showing you I measure 1,000 patients' chakras energy.
of our main patient do not have energy in any of the chakras, independent on their uh, diagnosis, they can have only anxiety or only depression or only headache, knee pain or low We showed that even diabetes, uh, patients with hypertension, cancer, uh, patients with history of myocardial infarction, or, or any other chronic disease are associated with energy deficiency in the chakras energy centers. And the use of high concentrated medications it will harm even more. That is why I'm using hydrally diluted medications to replenish the chakras energy centers. The conclusion of this study is that it's important to study and treat the chakras energy when the patient has dyspnea symptoms, especially in the case of patients who had history of COVID-19 infection and was treated with high concentrated medications. And the treatment replenishing the chakras energy using high diluted medications is very important to recover all the patient's symptoms, in this case, dyspnea and abdominal distension. Thank you for listening. Everything in excess is opposite to nature. This excess meaning high concentrated medications. Uh, here I'm concluding and I'm finishing my presentation. I would like to thank to hear my presentation. If you have any question, I will be very, very happy to answer you. Thank you. Thank you, Huang. Uh, both the presentations are uh, very uh, exclusive and already I always tell we have, whenever we have conducted uh, webinars, uh, we used to have this word every time. You always focus on the uh, main root of the problem than uh, uh, going for some medications or anything else. So root yeah. has to be uh, first healed than any others. So yes, uh, if there are any questions from the audience, please uh, you can either put that in the comment box or you can also raise your hand so that I'll make you uh, interact with the speaker. I see there are no questions uh, from okay. audience. Yeah, so with this, uh, we will be concluding the day one of international conference on uh, recent uh, trends in life sciences. And uh, there is a uh, second part of this particular conference. All the links were already shared and it will start uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. IST. And uh, there are uh, many other presentations and other tracks uh, along with the uh, oral and poster presentations from the students and I would like to conclude by again informing that this particular international conference is being conducted on behalf of Enleven Archive uh, from Journal of uh, Natural Products and Traditional Medicine and we are uh, inviting editorial board members and uh, issues for the upcoming journal. And uh, yes, uh, thanks a lot for all the speakers of the day one who have uh, successfully completed their presentations. And I wish uh, all the best for all the uh, students who have presented their uh, oral and poster presentations. And yes, I expect everyone to uh, come back uh, uh, to the day two of International Virtual Conference tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Guman. Thank you. Thank you, Huang. I'm ending the session. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.